Today's uh, stream is going to be something uh, very, very different to what we've done before. This is going to be more a, um, I want to say like a sales pitch for people who want to play Kings of War. Um, you've got your friends that uh, just do not know um, what kind of war game they're missing out on. So our main objective is to explain the advantages at the beginning um, and then uh, demonstrate the Mantic Companion and then take you through a demo game of uh, Salt the Earth. Well, not really... It's kind of a demo game. We're going to play full like points value introduction values. game. Yeah, and we'll explain everything as we're going along. Yeah. Um, we'll be playing soft clock, um, but we're going to be playing with a clock uh, because that is really an integral part of what makes Kings of War really good. And we'll talk about that. We'll as talk we're about going it. along. Right. So Kings of War. Um, obviously, for us, uh, it's the best war game ever, um, and it didn't. This didn't just happen overnight. Obviously. Uh, Kings of War was originally a, a game designed by Alessio Calvatore, and Alessio has been had a he's a veteran. War he's game a designer. veteran war game designer. He worked for he, he designed <coughs> war games for GW. Um, he was involved in bolt action for Warlord Games. Just a just a great uh, war games designer. Mm -hmm. um, he worked on the Lord of the Rings strategy game, all sorts of stuff. Well, for those of you out there who are just getting into Kings of War or considering Kings of War, know that this isn't this isn't just a game that came out of nowhere. This is the third edition. So the first edition, I myself tried it, wasn't a big fan. Yeah, it was uh, it was allowed too much gaming. Okay, so the first edition was rough around the edges. The second edition put some restraints on, mostly the uh, the, the uh, unit limits. So you can't go crazy with like war machines and stuff like that. Third edition was very well dialed in and we're currently at three and a half, um, which has some more ticks. And basically what's happened is um, with three and a half, they put all the books together. So you only need the one book and actually you don't even need the book. Yeah. If you have a subscription to the Mantic Companion, which we'll also get into later, um, you don't need the book. It's uh, it, 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 it's everything it's is all in one place. Mantic is not into an abusive relationship with its players. <laughs> okay, true. So it's that you know obviously they're driven by profit, but not at the point of alienating or destabilizing their game. Some games um, we no longer play anymore uh, simply because it's impossible to keep up both financially and with the hobby effort to have painted miniatures on the table. Yep. You know, if, if you're like a, a plastic, a great plastic player, then that probably doesn't matter too much for you for the effort side of things, but you're still spending the money on the miniatures. There's no meta chasing. <clears throat> no. All right, so, uh, and you see on the picture there, that is one example of multi-basing amazing, amazingness. Um, uh, thank you all the community people who have posted these up on Facebook groups, we've just taken them. Um, hopefully it's okay for us to use them. Um, if it isn't, oops. Um, <laughs> you so, published it. <laughs> yeah, it, it. It's on there, now you're internet famous. All right, so um, many war games drive sales by creating complex rule sets and rules interactions and introducing new rules that are better than old rules. Yeah. You know, like, it, that, that creates, uh, well, I'll just go through. This perfect imbalance is a design philosophy. Um, it's in vogue to maximize props. It's a thing which is in uh, a lot of computer games and a lot of collectible card games. Yeah. Um, I would say that it's not suitable for war gaming because of the effort and the cost. That's it's right. just, you know, like you, you, you just can't keep up. Well, there's, you bring in those new rule sets without really thinking about what it's doing to the overall system and the community. Uh, you, you start doing that, unbalances the system right from the get-go, makes a poor game. It, you don't want to play a game where you lose because the new rules trump the old well, rules. Well, uh, unless you're the guy that's got the new rules and, exactly. and you're trumping the old yeah. rules. You know, it's not really, I don't know, I don't think it fosters good sportsmanship. It does It's kind of like douchebagginess in my opinion. Yep. <laughs> All right, so... Um, Okay, uh, Mantic went with a less aggressive, more sustainable and community friendly approach. They built a, uh, a fair war game, and that's the main part, it's fair. fair. No matter what faction you're playing, it's fair. And uh, they give, they support the community directly through the uh, the rules committee. Yeah. Um, so we actually have an in into the game design. So where there's problems, it can be addressed, and which is what's happened. Uh, generally, every year they come out with something called Clash of Kings, which is uh, some rules tweaks and some uh, a few little additions. And they're not like big sledgehammer additions, which completely break things. They're just small things. And those are balanced. Those rules, those tweaks, by a rules committee, a rules com uh, community. And th these are members within the community that are spread out all over the world and sort of listen to their fellow members and say, uh, and they work on <coughs> suggestions what they think needs to be balanced or tweaked. Slight tweaks, but that's done by the players. The rules are easy to learn. 
it only takes a couple of turns. And you know what? Once you've seen this demo and have played the game, you'll have a good grasp on most of the game. Yep. Um, you know, you won't know all the special rules because we don't have them all. Um, but you know, they they're usually very clear. Yep. Um, the rules are clear. The rules are exceptionally clear, concise, and just make sense. Just like chess. Yeah. There's there's not not a lot of uh, not a lot of silly stuff. Um, there are only a handful of interactions that need to become explicit rules. Yep. Um, for example, uh, when you shoot into a unit, you just you uh, figure out what cover you're in because of the arc you're in. That's right. Okay, so that's you know in two different areas of the book. One of them is shooting at your target, while there is cover. Yeah. Way later, but you know maybe if they were like coupled together right beginning, uh, people won't have missed that by going into the cover section that's there. So there's just a couple little improvements that could be done there. Yeah. Um, when the issue comes up, a quick look through the rules will resolve it due to very clear language. The rules are elegant. Instead of uh, you know uh, burying the players in endless special rules and their synergies. Kings of War gets its gameplay through on-table tactics. Like I said, chess-type feel, maneuver and decision-making. You know classical that- Classical Wargaming. Classical Wargaming. If you win or lose a game, it's not gonna be because of a gotcha moment. It's not gonna be because of a poor rules written. You made a mistake, or you made a right choice, a strong choice over someone else. Instead of over-the-top over game-breaking you, units and factions to give flavor, Kings of War, uh, breathes a very light step. Something as simple as having wider availability of a particular special uh, within a faction gives it a unique sort of feel. So yeah, like Herd having Pathfinder. So they're yeah, very good the at whole crossing army. terrains in their yeah. army. Um, elves having a higher ballistic skill, so they're better shooting. Dwarves have a higher armor. so Headstrong. And headstrong, you know. Um, undead having shamble. There's, shamble. There's, you know, it's not like oh, you've got this giant lord that will wipe out half the opponent's army. No. Stuff like that to make things. So, you know, it, it's it's very gentle. And it's, it's amazing because you're most powerful not individual but monster titan like creatures you're going to see some today by the way they don't break the game they're there for they're a supporting element to the army yeah you, the good old regiment of troops is going to be That's your staple. what what really does the game for you because mostly the objective ways yeah okay so the rules are that person proof we all know that person yeah okay the game is designed for time play from the uh, from the ground up and avoids bad faith players weaponizing time wasting someone who slow plays only burns their own time yep and makes things worse for themselves. That's right. Okay. And the other one is their army building structure makes it very difficult for that person to break the game. And the missions make it difficult to win via skewing your list. Those that live by the skew die by, die the, by skew. the skew. You can skew. The more points you got, the more skew, the more skew you can simply because you've got more points. It's you know, like you can skew a lower list, but you're gonna suffer more penalties to your army than if you skew a, a larger list. That's why we'll always advocate. 2,000 points 2, or 1999 plus what? what one. 2,000 points is the actual official game uh, points value. That's yeah. what they balance the game at. That's what they've, they've played the game at. Um, and it says that in the book. But for the most part, a lot of people like to play 2,300 because you get usually one big extra awesome thing. Sometimes you might get like one big excellent uh, extra awesome regiment or you might do two. So you, you can get a bit of skewing, a bit more power, get power play with that. Yep. But you know what, between 2300 and, and 2000, the game plays pretty much the same, except for some unit choices. You get and, more choices. And you, could, and you could argue that somebody that does a MSU skewing, yeah. You know, they would have like two to three more units for their for extra 300 points. Yeah. Yeah. You know, or, you know, maybe improvement. So there, there's something to be said for, uh, you know, basically 2300 and 2000 points, which are the, the dominant points values. And this probably is my favorite point at all. We're right there. Generalship matters the most. Kind of what I was saying earlier about the chess type game and making those very fine tuned uh, right choices and not making that one mistake in the game. The rules create a game that makes your generalship matter. The missions. The missions are varied and excellent, creating a focus to build your army towards. Okay, so um, if it was just kill where you win the game by killing everybody you just go with the biggest most powerful stuff you don't in kings of war there's 12 missions they're all different kill is one of them 
Yep, kill is almost one. almost never played because it's probably the most boring one. Yeah, and every mission um, you, you're going to be killing stuff anyway. Yeah. So uh, sometimes some tournament ones, some tournaments use it, but generally not. Uh, the mission. Just on that note, yeah. the whole thing about the missions is that's why you want to build yourself a very balanced army. Mm -hmm. You want lots of different choices. You want some fast stuff. You want some skirmishers. You want some big units to hold objectives or or loot tokens. You you that's why skewing doesn't help certain armies in certain missions because you want to have a balanced approach because you don't know if you're going to a tournament you may not know what mission you're going to be playing in what order yep so um the missions all require different capabilities in your armies to win you can choose the strongest sorry you can't just choose the strongest units because each one has different strengths and weaknesses that's right their end result is incredibly engaging gameplay and almost limitless tactics which throws flows through to army building in Kings of War, you build a toolkit, not a bag of tricks. And that's what a lot of other games are. Yep. Your, your bags of tricks, your collectible card game type gameplay. Too expensive to be doing that in a war game. No, nope, that's right. Okay. Um, unless you're one of those people that can like swap out the armies pretty quickly, resell them, stuff like that. Uh, between this list building, this, this and un unit unlock system for building armies, players are steered towards balanced and varied lists that are not only fun to play with, but more importantly, to play against. And this, this point here, coming up the last point one of my favorite things about kings of war is powerful units and magic items and spells are not crutches for players within the game where you're going to see on our list that we have today we each selected some sort of we call them staple magic items not like the old games where every where you could have a magic item that would break the game or you know does something purple just, sun purple sun <laughs> purple sun oh my god that was one heck of an item uh you're not going to see that in kings of war it's, these are just little boosts or buffs or little helpers for uh, uh, your unit, but they're not going to break the game. Um, or even individual characters or anything else like we just talked about earlier. They're not, they're there to support your army. They're not there to say, I'm going to wade in and just crush your whole army with this one giant dragon or creature or, you know, vampire. Mm -hmm. The terrain rules. Yep. Okay, the terrain plays a great role in your battles. Roles that make sense and are just as important to victory as the abilities of your units. So uh, the, the, the terrain types are hills. They block line of sight to shorter units behind them. And the uh, cover mechanic is very um, straightforward in Kings of War. And it is designed in such a way that you are not arguing, can I see or can I not see? You, you can work it out with math. Very simple math. If you can add and subtract, you can work out the, the cover of Kings of War. And for all you new players out there, must say, Dash 28, probably one of the best resources you're going to have out there for helping you, uh, you know, already pre-set up your, your terrain. Just follow the maps that they give you. Uh, even have Mission Selector on there, too, if you want. Yep. Uh, as that's you'll what see, we use every that's time. what we use every single time. When you see us do a stream here, our terrain setup has been dictated to us by Dash 28. And uh, there's an actual link in the show notes uh, to Dash 28. Yeah. Okay, so forests. Forests block line of sight to anything. Uh, sorry, we'll get back to the hills. Um, the hills, they block line of sight to shorter units behind them. They provide a bonus if you charge off them, provide a line of sight boost if you're on them. And if you edge up to them and peek over, you get cover. One little, uh, what should we call it, note there. Some units do not get bonuses off hills, so be wary of that. Flying Ones units, that fly. individuals, no, not individuals. No, flying units. Flying units, pretty much it. That's it. That's it. That's don't, it. They don't get a bonus. If you have the keyword fly, you do not get a bonus when you're coming off a hill. Okay, um, all right, so forest, they block line of sight to anything on the other side of them, regardless of the size. Yeah. If you're on the other side of a forest, you know, and there's one between you and what's looking at it, you can't be seen. They hinder movement through them, unless you have Pathfinder, yep. uh, like a lot of na nature type armies, um, and they provide cover if you're in them. There's also area terrain, things like swamps and fields. Uh, they provide cover if you're in it and you're not too tall. That was a tweak which they made for 3.5 before. Yep. You had... Uh, you dragons had, hiding in Dragons the... in swamps. <laughs> and so, like, uh, as a friend Brian would say, he, his guys were slithering in the mud. Yeah, that's right. So, you know, he had, he had the big <laughs> slashes. So they've changed that. So if you're not... Uh, if you're basically large infantry and lower, um, you are able to get cover when you're in those positions. If you're behind them, you don't get cover. So they that's don't right. block line of sight. 
obstacles. They provide cover if you're up against them and in between them. But if you're up against an obstacle and you're shooting at a target that's on the other side of the obstacle, they won't get cover from it. So it makes it a very good defensive position for shooting. Yeah. Okay, uh, also they hinder uh, charges coming across. So they're also give you a bit of a benefit. Unless you have Strider. Which is, an, which is another special one. Yeah. Okay, and there is impassable terrain. They block movement and line of sight to all but the tallest units. That's right. Okay, so you're basically your titans are able to see over them. Titans are things like giants, giants and dragons and, and stuff like that. But in tournament rules now, they've made the impassable terrain the same height as a titan. They've made it uh, height mm -hmm. six. Again, little tweak yeah, just for balance. Like seven, yep because you'd have a, a big shooting dragon or something hiding behind the house that he could see over and shoot mm -hmm. and get cover for <laughs> it, you know. Yeah, yeah, so what they do is they've made it that you have to be on a hill to be able to see it. Yeah. So it, it, it depends on the tournament. Some of them it's height six, some of them it's height seven. That's right. Yeah, so they go. Okay, so this is how it comes into the game. Being able to read the table, decide how to deploy your arm to take advantage of it and subsequently maneuver in the game will win or lose you the battle. Coupled with the missions that give objective placement, sorry, that have objective placement or loot counters, yep. and you'll see that in this demo game. Uh, each map is a tactically is a tactical challenge, rewarding your generalship. And so as uh, as Gareth said, a special mention to Epic Dwarf Map Generator, which is on Dash 28, which allows us to generate really good maps to play on. King's War, it's time efficient. You can get a full once you've played some games. Uh, you can get a full-size game done in two hours. Easy. Yeah, this includes setting up and packing up. Multi-basing really speeds things up. Uh, it's great for parents and you know, other busy types trying to squeeze in partner-approved weeknight gaming. So you can actually have a game night during the week and it's not going to be a problem. You can have dinner yep. with your family. You can go out and you can be back to put the kids to bed. That's right. You know, it's, it's, it's not you know, like a, a four-hour commitment to have a game. Um, your typical actions of movement, magic, shooting, and fighting are all streamlined to reduce the amount of time and effort you spend resolving actions. This makes the game play very quickly and your time is spent playing the game, not working it out. So multi-basing, uh, that simply means it's quicker setup, cleanup. You don't have all those individual models and pieces that you're going to be moving. Yeah, everything's on the one base. It's all on the one base. And, and we've got some amazing Tony, uh, who's in the house here, one of our best multi-basers. And, and speaking of which, there that's, one of his, that's one of his units right that's there. Heard, look at that multi-base right there. So that allows you to be more efficient in how many models you put on a base because you're representing with a beautiful scenic diorama on it. You don't have to do that, but it really looks amazing. And, it, and guess what? These are the guys that score really high at tournament points for Painted Army. Yep, for the creative side. So multi-basing uh, units may, uh, means for quicker setup and cleanup, and you don't have to have all the models. You might have 12 units in your army, uh, equivalent of a skirmish game. Like you're playing Blood Bowl, you've got 11 miniatures. That's right. On the thing, you're playing Kings of War, you might have 12 units. So, yeah. you know, anybody that's played skirmish games, they, they appreciate how having few actual physical pieces to move speeds up. It really does. Yeah, it really speeds up the game. Okay, so you can play a, basically a mass battle game, but you only have to deal with like a dozen units, maybe, maybe 15. If you really go MSU, maybe 20. Yep, because so, you're not removing individual models. And, you're, you're basically putting wound counters on the base. Oh, I just took five wounds. You will put that a marker on that base. The, the speed is so much better. The speed uh, advantages of multi-basing and using a counter instead of individual models. Yep. Once you know, like it, at first, it might seem it might seem strange, yeah. But the gameplay advantages, um, it just makes it light years ahead. You know, like you you half your game if you're running like Skaven, yeah, or something like that in Warhammer Fantasy, you I mean, you're probably halving the effort that you're playing the game. Oh. It's it's so much. You're spending more time playing the game, not mucking about with little bits and pieces. That's right. Okay, so um, you don't remove models from your turn game. Wound counters super quick. Unit footprints remain static, which allows for quick unit movement. Uh, pivoting instead of wheeling removes a fudge factor for bad path that that bad faith players can The realize. old, everybody knows the old Warhammer wheeling that you used to do and used to be able to create all these sort of fudging type things. Not yeah. intentionally, but it would happen. It, it might, it's, you know, it's, it's way more precise. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's uh, efficient combat resolution. So minimum number of rolls required speeds up cal calculation part of the game. And the beauty of that, that sort of that you're just, just that on that note, in your turn, you're not having your opponent do his test. You do the test. So if you're attacking a unit, 
he will tell you the number that you have to beat. So let's say, for example, it's a 2022. You need 20 to waiver the unit, you need a 22 to break the unit. You're the one that's going to be rolling that dice. You roll 2d6 and you add the number of wounds. If you break, beat those numbers, guess what? You've wavered or you've broken that unit. Simple. Yep. Um, during your turn, your opponent has very little opportunity to create slow play. Bard mentioned this earlier. That's why clock having a clock in Kings of War is beautiful. You want a slow play? That is your time that you're eating. Have at it, please. And it's you know it's great for when you're running tournaments. Yeah. Rounds finish on time. On time, because that's it. Your clocks run out. Yep. Rules are very clear and well written, so there's not much room for any debate. Miniature Agnos, and, and, uh, and this is very simple. Uh, Mantic and also part of Mantic's good relationship part, with the community. Yeah, like, I mean, they, they haven't set out where you go to a tournament and you can't, they may have prizes for Mantic. Full Mantic Army. Full Mantic Armies, that's great. Ticket paid for to uh, Clash of Kings. That's right. Yep, that, Mark, I mean, yep. because they appreciate you supporting them, but they're also, they recognize, you'll know that because of their kingdom of men army and their human armies are largely not supported by them as well because yeah. they know the community if i want to go miniatures but yeah if i want to do a roman army i'll do a roman army i'm doing That's a roman my, army and he's doing one right now and i've got a a byzantine army that we're going to turn into a kingdom of men so really open to you know if you want to 3d print if you want to use your own historical minis go for it uh i personally have four full mantic armies myself but now I'm gonna try some other stuff as well. Yeah, um, I don't think, oh, actually my, my Empire of Dust has quite a few of the undead miniatures, but I have mostly repurposed GW. Old Camry um, stuff, Oath, yeah. Oathmark, um, yeah, so um, Empire stuff, stuff like that. So um, yeah, you can, uh, you're not stuck with propri using a proprietary set of miniatures that yeah. suddenly become unusable with the rules change. That's right. That is one of my pet peeves. I've got, I've got thousands of dollars of miniatures which i would never i not really be able to use in existing current game systems yep because they have been um basically made into second class citizens of those systems that's right <laughs> and i would be surprised within your communities right now if you don't have like our community we have a number of guys with amazing 3d printing uh capabilities now that's also acceptable you can get some gorgeous models printed up uh from the files online and go from there uh, and also the other thing too, oh, where did <laughs> Yeah, yeah, let's put that back up there. I was just checking the chat to make sure everything was okay. Yep. Uh, wallet friendly, uh, again, uh, why I have four Mantic armies. Those four Mantic armies cost me less than say one or one and a half of some of those other <laughs> yeah. uh, armies. Yep. Just wallet friendly, like decent, decently priced. And you know, it, it's also great because you can pick up, and there's a lot of people that uh, quit Warhammer Fantasy, um, they haven't gotten to know that Kings of War is just amazing. So if you can, before they realize it, pick up their armies, yeah. go ahead and do it. <laughs> Get it while you can. Yeah, that's so right. So it's great. Okay, also, you don't need the full model count for a unit. So a regiment has 20 models. That's right. You can use 15 models. You can use 75%. You could even use less if you're going to do what Tony does and build a really cool dynamic yeah, uh, good, display. Yeah, a diorama. Like uh, one of those pictures which we have had up on the, uh, the the pictures on the side there was um, inspired by Rembrandt's The Night Watch. That's right. And it looks amazing when you know from the same angle, it looks almost the same as the painting. That's right. And it it it's so great. And when you do something like that, you know, it, it's it's awesome. Now this picture you're seeing right now, it's multi base, not really. What it is it's a movement tray with your old model. So if you are playing. Age of Sigma, yeah. if you have got the old square base stuff or some other games, all you really need to do is you get yourself a base with slots that your existing bases can, can fit on and you can find them on Thingiverse. Yep. Um, if you want to make them yourselves, you can use Tinkercad. If you've got a 3D printer, it's really easy. And what you do is, uh, or what I did with my Empire Army, for example, which is now League of Rodia, is I put double-sided tape, carpet That's tape, right. yep. and I just stuck the miniatures on there and I've played it for a couple years now, and all I did was I poured some white glue onto that thing, so they're all on there, flopped and now white glue, and, that, and now it's kind of uh, you know, multi-based. Because we have, a, we have a couple of guys in our community that play Age of Sigmar, mm -hmm. sorry, that other game, <laughs> mm -hmm. and Kings of War, uh, and they do that. They, have, they still have their figs, so they're usable in Age of Sigmar, and they uh, have their figs so, so they can be also used in, in Kings of War. Yep. 
Okay, and also not having to have the full model count. If you, uh, it gives some um, some freedom of what you're using. If you want models that are looking more dynamic, instead of like marched up and, and shoulder to shoulder, uh, you can spread them out on the base. That's right. So you don't need them. Okay, um, diorama friendly. Each unit can be a diorama, allowing you to flex your hobby muscle. Uh, my undead army nice, is yes. uh, inspired by a visit to a castle in Germany or Austria. And, the, and in particular, the graveyard there. So I've done every um, unit is on a cobbled graveyard with gravestones and stuff like that. So that gave me my inspiration. And if you want a theme, yeah, like if you want to build a samurai ogre army or go ahead, no problem. You can use historical miniatures. You can you tweak it and add your own sort of fantasy flavor there. Uh, no problem. Yeah, uh, it's it's all good. You can you can basically go, you know, over the top with your hobby, uh, which is why I think Kings of War might be the best, um, the best actual uh, hobbyist. Now, the one thing that is incredibly important in Kings of War when you're doing all that, and the only thing, base size. If you're doing a horde of infantry, all the base sizes and and uh, it, it's all stipulated on what your base size needs to be because that's the accuracy in Kings of War. My infantry regiment is gonna be the same as your infantry regiment. And I mean, in, like a Titan base is always gonna be 75 mil by 75 mil. That's mm -hmm. never gonna change, unless it changes in the next edition. Now there is which something they've called never done. exceptional base size. You yeah. might have some awesome miniatures which are bigger than what they should be. Yeah. You fit them on the smallest base that you can, and then you mark the width. That's on right. The, on the front of the unit. So you really know what's going on. That's right. All right, so one of the, the biggest things of, uh, of why Kings of War is great is the community. There is a lot of people uh, putting out content. You have like Dash 28, you have Counter Charge, you have um, uh, The Drunken Disordered. Yeah, uh, there, there's like a bunch of different podcasts out there. there I've got a lot of them linked in the, uh, the, the show notes, but there's no shortage of content. Um, Steve Hildrew was doing some really good stuff for a while. Yeah. You know, um, Drew Allen was doing some probably the best content for Kings of War. Yeah. You know, at the highest production value. But yeah, you know, like, oh, that's a lot of effort. It's a yeah, lot of a effort. A lot of effort. Um, you know, so there's, there's a lot of that. So it's a, there's also a well-established uh, competitive community. Kings of War didn't have to build its commu uh, competitive community from scratch. It pre-existed from Warhammer Fantasy Battle. That's right. People around the world went and looked at different rule systems and the masters groups went to Kings of War because it is an excellent competitive game. Yep. Okay, there's, there's, there's tournaments everywhere. There's uh, conventions uh, at the largest war game conventions, except for LVO. Damn it, I want to see Kings of War at LVO. I really yeah, want to see it at LVO. Like, that, it that would be, be LVO, there's you know? something there with the organizers. I'm not sure. I, 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 I don't know what's going on yeah. there anymore, if there's something political going but on. or. We, or I know going. that there's somebody in the house here. They mentioned they were from Norway, and then we got folks from the UK. We have people from Brazil showing Brazil, up all the time. Yeah. Check your local areas. There's probably a Masters. I know there's a Masters in, in near Norway every year. There's UK Masters every year, and those are large tournaments that you have to qualify for, but they also have, here's the thing, you there's the best of the rest. So if you don't it, make it and you just want to play Kings of War. You just want to play Kings of War, they'll have a very large tournament they'll be hosting with that as well. It was almost as big as the Masters. So yeah, it's, it's gonna be pretty big. All right, so the maturity of the player base. So this is gonna be a, a bit of a um, controversial claim. Oh, okay. Okay, so Kings of War requires good generalship to win instead of being carried by how much you spend on the latest hotness or chasing meta Yeah. Uh, to get a competitive advantage. So those people that have less patience um, are not, don't last in Kings of War because they can't use their old ways of winning games. Yeah. Okay, this deters the impatience. So the players that are generally less salty uh, are generally less salty and more pleasant to be around. That's true. And uh, every tournament I've been at, I've not run into, I've played, I would think probably, okay, I played 40K at tournaments for a while, and I will say every tournament, one game was at least a salty player. Yeah. Okay, and I played in many tournaments. That's fair. 
I play Kings of War in many tournaments for many years now, and I have not run into at a tournament one salty player. Everything's been great. It's been, it's it's really friendly, and the way that intention is used yep. uh, when you're playing the game really um, disarms. And remember that word because we're going to be going over it later on a lot. Intent, intent, intent. Okay. All right. So, uh, all right. So the downside. Unlike some other games, the strengths of Kings of War are not obvious. That's the big problem with Kings of War. Yeah. Okay. You can't just read a unit entry or look at a model and uh, see how it will win your games. It requires far deeper consideration. And that's the, the that is a downside because we have guys in our gaming community that never dive into Kings of War because they've made an assessment without actually ever playing the game. Ever playing it or they've played one, one game. game. You've got to and play it's been 10 a dozen games and then you get real feel for it, what we're talking about here. Like we've played we've played hundreds of games between us and we are still learning things every single, every single game. game. Every single game. And it's not I'm learning something about the rules, it's learning implementation. It's learning how to be a better general. An honest question with you, sir. I'm mm. going to put you on the spot. Mm. Have you and I ever had a bad game? No, never. No, no, never had a we, bad we, game. We, we, we've had one feisty game when we were on the on the source. Oh, of course, <laughs> feisty. We, we, just, had a, we had a we had a feisty game. Red, you yeah. know, blonde redheads, mm -hmm. Germanic, whatever. <laughs> oh, just just having the the uh, the, the fight and juice whiskey. Yep. Um, we, that was our, our only feisty game. That's but right. You know what? It was okay. You know, it was it was fine. So. Um, so yeah, it, it really requires a handful of games with varying scenarios and a diverse list to understand what Kings of War brings to the That's table. right. All right. Okay, so um, thanks for sitting through all that stuff. That's actually quite a bit. So I'm just gonna go back to the talk for a moment. And uh, yeah, this, I'm sorry to say this, but uh, there's gonna be some more talking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I might try and timestamp uh, when we actually start the game for the people who didn't want to go through the beginning part, but we think to represent the game, you really have to understand what it's bringing to you and what the community is bringing to you. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is um, we're actually going to talk about um, what is the, uh, the Mantic Companion. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna switch this over. Let me start by saying how lucky all you new folks are to come into this hobby and have the Mantic Command, uh, a shout out to Greg. Uh, Easy Army. Easy Army. That stuff. And Mantic for taking this on because it's really is such a beautiful resource that they have. We didn't have this in first edition. Uh, we started getting it in second edition and now this is just a, a really almost perfected source for everybody to use at a really low cost when you work it out. Yeah, and the thing is you don't need to subscribe to use it. Um, there is a free version. Uh, there are some limitations. I think uh, when you do a printout, you won't get the rules. You are. If it's going the way it used to, I'm not I'm not too sure, but you can still build a, a certain number of lists. You'll end so, up getting uh, it. Hopefully you're seeing on the screen right now, the Mantic Companion. Um, so that's uh, that's all that. So what it is, uh, it, has, it supports a bunch of their games. Uh, I've only gone for the Kings of War subscription. Because okay. that's what we play. And we had the list builder. We have the rules. The rules are great. Everything's in here. So this was what Bart was talking about earlier. You, so yeah, yeah, it's all here. You want to you look at a rule. Yielding. All that sort of stuff. It's all good. Okay, so all the rules are in here. Um, you can search for a rule, which is great. Uh, I don't have the keyboard over this side of the table, so I'm not going to do it. Okay, uh, you have the math hammer section where you can work out Bits and pieces for all you math goobs, you know, for all you guys that really want to work out the stats and, you know, and work out your builds. You can do this with every single unit, how it matches up, how it pairs up uh, versus other units in the game. OK, you have the tournament companion. You can, as a TO, create a tournament. Now, this is something which is being fleshed out uh, with extra data fields that they can use um, yeah. in there, but it's it's good. And what you do is uh, when you make a list, you can actually submit it directly to a tournament with a tournament code. Okay, and you have the King's War Hub, which takes you to the store, basically. And uh, But the, the bread and butter, oh, and the getting started. Okay, you can go to the Kings of Rule free, uh, War free rules. There will be a link later, but this is the heart of it. Okay, so there's really two ways of playing, or a couple ways of playing Kings of War. One of them is called skirmish. You have something called the getting started lists. These are what are in, uh, in those boxes. So the Storm of the Shire. Okay, you can take a look, and these are what 
comes in those boxes and all the rules that are associated. Look at, look at the point cost there. So, Perfect. So, 500 points so for that box. So great. You know, so you can work out what you need if you're going to do that. Also, the public can, you can add your list and make it a public list. Yep. So people can see what you're using. Okay. All right. We can go back to the uh, my lists. All right, so uh, let's get a bit of a, a preview of uh, one of my uh, dwarf lists that I've made. Okay, so not going to go too much into it, but um, you know, going through here, you've got all your units as you as you're putting them in. Uh, we'll do a quick build in a moment, um, but what you do, you have all your options, and everything else. Uh, you have a nice summary at the end of your total units and the total unit strength of your army and you have all your special rules and all that sort of stuff. You also have a view mode, which just displays everything and you can share it as, you can print it out, you can set it as an image, you can do it as a PDF or you can get a text summary. So that comes in handy. But let's just quickly go through um, uh, the army structure building. So one moment and switch over. That's right, you have the, again, we all used to have to do this manually to make sure that we were sticking within the rules. Yeah, and, this is way easier. Way easier. Okay, so one of the strengths of Kings of War is that it forces you to build your army with a structure via unlocks. So your normal infantry regiment, or infantry, heavy infantry, cavalry regiment, they unlock two troops and one hero monster titan war engine slot. That's right. Okay, so then a horde, a horde will unlock four troops, one hero, one monster titan, and war, one war engine. Then you have your large units, uh, the, monstrous, the monstrous stuff, um, things like ogres. Okay, so a horde will do these. And, two troops and two yep. different choices from following heroes yep. and so on. And uh, the large and the legions are somewhat similar. So how does this actually play out? So I'm and know that your companion will let you know when you are not compliant, when you haven't met those criteria. It'll let you know right away. Okay, so let's just, I'm just gonna go back to home and I'm going to do it, I'm gonna do a quick create. So let's say, uh, let's go for yeah, something easy to understand. Orcs, they're probably the easiest to understand, yep. you reckon? Quick create, comes up with a list. Okay, the list is empty, tells me how many points I have remaining. I go to put in, okay, let's just go with uh, a unit of axe. For example, a regiment. Uh, I'm gonna put a skull pole in there. Yep. I'm gonna add it to the list. So that will have uh, allowed you to unlock a certain amount of things. Let's just show folks right now, real quick here, Bard. Yeah. Try to unlock a couple of characters. Okay. What happens? So I go to, so Hero Infantry, let's, yeah. let's, add, let's add a couple flaggers. Flagger. One. one flag. Okay, let's try another one. Oh, look. You got too many. This list is invalid. Too many Hero Monster War Machines. So you need to get those unlocks. And down here, it says the slots. It even tells you where you broke the rule. So, you know, you've, you've, you've got all that. So this companion really helps you make a valid list. Yep. Okay, and uh, some, you know, it's it's very handy. So it's really worth the, I think it's $5.40 Canadian yeah. a month. And you get a, you can get a discount on that if yep. you just buy the year. Yep. Um, yeah, which okay. is cheaper so than I, the rule I, I think that's, I think that's the year, yeah. yearly cost. But put it this way, um, you eat some apples instead of a Big Mac once a month, Yeah. and you've paid for it. Yep. So that's, uh, that's fairly straightforward. All right, so, okay. We're almost, I think this, we're this almost rolled out, at what, the end. a month? Yeah. It's been out a month, two months now with testing. Uh, yeah, really I've got my money's worth already oh, in the it's month. It's amazing. <laughs> I'm just you now working stuff out. All right. Okay. So, what we're going to do is, well, thanks for sitting through all the talking. Yeah. All right. So, um, what we're going to do is, uh, we're going to put the music on and we're actually going to get to the game. We're going to get to the game. Yeah. Okay. So, we will be right back. Okay, everybody, we're back. Okay, so uh, the part you missed, uh, we did not talk about our lists. So we're bringing um, pretty much the list that we uh, have, well, have had on the stream before with some slight changes. Um, so uh, I'll go over mine. I have a regiment of Villain Penitents, they're the, the chaff. I have a unit of Paladin Monster Slayers, a horde with a brew of strength. They are a hammer and an anvil, they're pretty damn good. I've uh, a regiment of Valerian Bowman Infantry, which um, have phalanx, which is the uh, one of the things that Brother Mark get, which was very good in our last game. It was. 
Yeah, phalanx is uh, one of those keyword things that works against cavalry and flyers and all sorts of stuff. Okay, I have a, reg uh, a horde of Ogre Palace Guard. Um, I have a regiment of Order of the Abyssal Hunt, which are basically monster hunters. I have a regiment of Valerian Skirmish Cavalry, so they're nimble cavalry, light cav. I have Valerian Siege Artillery War Engine. I have a Phoenix, uh, which is basically a, a healer um, and a bit of range stuff. I have Exemplar Hunter, uh, which is Crimson the Huntress, which is an awesome utility piece in my army. I have my Priest, has Martyr's Prayer and Bane Chant too, as well as, actually, you know what? I dropped the, um, the Wizard's, uh, Wizard's Staff that gives me the reroll so I could fit in the um, the siege artillery. Oh, right, right. Okay, because this is not, you know. This is a de demo game. Yeah. Uh, High Chaplain Augustus, which is a special character um, with Bane Chant and Heal. And I have a High Paladin on Titan. All right, so let's go to your list. So uh, this is this is my sort of a demo Northern Alliance list. I certainly wouldn't promote or suggest this list for any serious play, but this gives you a sense and feel of you know some of the different li uh, units that Northern Alliance get offered. So starting off, I have a, a, a dwarf clansman unit, and I, those guys I've dropped down to defense four by giving them crushing one, so they get the frost hammers. Ice Nyads, so uh, Ice Nyads, I always love to pair them with a hammer of measured force. I hate them. You hate them, right? <laughs> but this, this is actually a really good example of when we talked about magic items earlier, of a staple item in the game. Hammer of measured force is a beautiful item to give to a unit like Ice Nyads. So they're always going to wound things on fours, no matter what they're facing. And because of their built-in rules of ensnare and all that, they're actually going to make it harder for you to hit them. Uh, that's why Bard hates them, because they're harder to hit, they mm. regen, and they can get healed up nicely with my healer. Pack Hunters, Regiment uh, here with Javelins. 12-inch um, Steady Aim, Pierce 1, they're, they're pretty fun. Icekin uh, Hunters, uh, I've got Huskarls with the Healing Brew. Ice Elementals, two hordes of those. One uh, regiment of Tundra Wolves with the Jesse's Boots, another staple item in the game. Uh, Snow Fox Swarm, Ice Kin Bolt Thrower. Uh, my Ice Queen Hero, where she's got the Periscope, which allows her to shoot and see over things because she has Blizzard 2 and Surge 8. Lord on Frostfang Hero with the Blade of Slashing. And last but not least, I have Krim today, the special character giant. All righty. Okay, so I'm just going to get us to the table view. There we go. And now we can uh, see your chat. So let's go. We'll start chatting on. with you folks. We're now we're, we're, it's game time. It's game time. It's game time. We're on. Okay. All right. And the full screen to that one. So one of the first things I'd like to talk about, Bard, just before we get started here, mm -hmm. we're, we're recommending even to you new players, really start your games if you can. Get yourself a nice leap clock. You're going to play what chess, we like to clock. call uh, a, yeah, like a, a chess clock. Uh, we, we like to play what we call in the beginning when you first start off, maybe your first 10 or 20 games, play with a, a soft clock. What that means is you'll ass assign your 30, what is it, an hour uh, to each, each player. Yep. You're not going to play hard clock where if you time out, it's game over. Your goal in the soft clock mission is to try to beat your time, to try to be faster than the other player when you're making your decisions, to be efficient with your time, and try not, and try not to finish the game with your clock running out. There's no penalty if your clock does run out because it's a soft clock. Uh, but that is your goal. You're just training yourself for the future. You're just training because once you get used to the clock, it is so very rare that you will time out and you find that it really adds a feel to the game as well. It certainly does. It, uh, it, it's huge. Okay. All right. Well, I was going to swap some of my dice out. Uh, thing. All right. Well, so what we're going to do is... Yeah, we'll do some, some pre-game stuff. 
All right, so what we're going to do is talk about, uh, Gareth, you may as well go with uh, one, some of the little tips that you can use to speed up your game. So okay, so but this I got this from Bard. So you, sitting right here, Paul, uh, you get the shout out when we first started playing Yay, this mate. many, many years ago. What Bard suggested to me really early was count out groups of dice have different colors. So you'll see here I've got three sets of dice. This is all the dice that I'm going to need in the game. So I've got 10 white, 12 red, and 10 green. Always double check that because I've gone tournaments where I didn't count and I was missing, say, one green dice. And the whole game, I was when I put these together, because let's say I've got to roll 20 dice, I will put these together, that's my 20. Well, if I didn't count them, I've only got 19. So I was cheating myself the whole game by only rolling 19 when I should be 20. So double check at the beginning of every game because dice go missing. There's 20 dice when I need to roll 20. When I need to roll 15, I just remove five. Really quick to do. I have 12, because I have a 12 in my army with my Pathfinders, there's my 12 dice when I need them. Because you're conserving time by having these dice uh, counted out and organized with different colors, you're going to be really efficient when it comes to your turn and needing to know what dice and how many you need to roll when. And it's one of those things that you can do is organize your dice during your opponent's turn. Now, if you want to go one step in the uh, retentiveness, there it is. Um, you can do what I have done here. And how uh, many dice are in there? I have 36 dice in here, three, three lots of 12. I can do I can do my three times tables. It's like the first times tables that I ever learned that I can remember. Yeah. For I don't know what I was like, six or six. whatever, uh, when I learned my times tables. Yeah. But it's very easy for me to, I, I need nine dice, it's just, you know, three threes, I just pull them out. That's it. Okay, I can throw them in, uh, anything else. That's another way of doing it. Um, I am making another uh, STL file for this, um, which will have holes for magnets and a sliding drawer to hold in the top. And what I'll do is I'll put that up for free on Thingiverse at, uh, once I get that uh, nice. all, all nice. dialed in. So that is a very handy thing. All right, the other things that come in handy. Wound counters. Wound, yes. Wound counters. So. You've got those. Uh, and these are a shout out to Dan, Dan Miner from Miner Creations. Creations. Uh, just great, I put my little name on the back because so many people have these now. Okay, um, and I have these ones, which are magnetic ones, which I have on my army, which uh, Drew uh, put together. I have little magnets on top of my little handles that I use to help, you know. And where did you units. get those ones? Uh, I got them from Drew. Oh, but nice. They, I think he got them on Etsy or something like Etsy, that. Etsy, that's right, yeah. But uh, they're a wound counter, and they stick on with a magnet. Beautiful. Which is great. You don't lose them. You can't You can't forget, oh, damn it, which, which unit did it go with? And again, so another Mantic. thing. Mantic sticks. These sticks, these are so amazing. You, you get one uh, all the way up from a 3-inch stick to a 12-inch stick. Again, these will find these will give you so much time. For example, when we set up today, uh, when we start doing our objectives, uh, you have to have be more than 12 from this objective, from any objective counter. To place another one. To place another one. You have to be three inches from a impassable terrain or the edge. Well, guess what? I've got my three and I've got my 12 ready to go. So it speeds that up. All right, then you have the templates. So much like those other, those other templates which we're using there, this is a six inch one. It's, uh, it's handy, but the most important one is the arc the arc. Okay, you can either buy them or you can 3D print them. Uh, I printed up a bunch of these ones with little easy to hold handles because, you know, as they're getting older now, fingers are getting after yeah. it. <laughs> yep, so, yep. So we've got these. So we've got, I've got these in this size and I've also got a bunch of mini ones. So, and I'm gonna throw in something else that a lot of guys in our old, in the early days of streaming here, you know, last year, year before and all that, they'd say, you know, Gareth, Momo, why don't you have a laser? Well, a laser is such a handy tool because if you want to see, if I'm measuring up, let's say I'm finding an arc and I'm seeing if I'm in, if which I'm in here in terms of what arc I'm attacking or if I can have line of sight, all that fun stuff. There we go. See that little laser there? It just tells me right there if I measured up or not. Okay. And the other thing that you're going to want is you're going to want some counters. Okay, so in the game, you have uh, essentially three states for your units. Yeah. Um, you have disordered. If you've taken a wound in melee, 
or there's one one spell in one special character which will disorder a unit, um, it has some impact on the game. You also have hindered. If you are charging through a, um, actually, you know what? It'd be easier if I do it on here. There we go. That's disordered. Uh, you can't even really read it right. Oh, well. Disordered, hindered, and the last one is wavered. If your unit uh, is on the edge of being broken, uh, you are in a state that's called being wavered. So we'll go through and, uh, you know, you need counters for that sort of thing. Um, also, another thing which is really handy to have if you have hills on the table is something that you can use, like booster seats. Yep. What will happen is you've got a unit that you want to put on a hill or near a hill and it'll be sliding off, whatever. You have one of these here and basically it'll just hold it in place. So some sort of elevation thing. So I picked up uh, from a dollar store, one centimeter by one centimeter wooden blocks, a bag of them. And I've just glued them together into a, into a shape. Although interestingly enough, you need those far less now because of your beautiful new hills that you got for, from uh, uh, terrains for games. Terrains for games. Yeah, in Poland, right yep. out of Poland there. So okay. shout out to those fellas. And uh, that was shipped over here to Canada and uh, they did a superb job in uh, packaging the items. The box was almost falling apart when it came because uh, it got wet for some reason. Yep. Um, and uh, but everything inside was so well double wrapped, double wrapped, wrapped whatever yep. in uh, in the cling wrap that it just came through, uh, no problem at all. I would really suggest if you're Kings of War, you get that. Now that comes down to terrain. Kings of War is great with the terrain. There's only a bunch. There's only like uh, I think five different types. And if you're using the Dash 28 maps, you only need two of each. So we have area terrain. These are the ones which give you cover if you're height three or under. Yep. We have two hills, we have two forests, we have two obstacles, and we have two impassables. That's it. Okay, if you're a tournament organizer, you're running 20 tables, you know exactly how many pieces you need for each table. Always bring it's a good. spare or two yeah, okay. of each. <laughs> yeah, something breaks. And when you're talking about spares, if you're going to a tournament, bring two tape measures. Uh, when I went to Masters, yep. I went to Best of the Rest, my tape measure broke, and luckily my opponent had a spare one, and he loaned it to me for the rest of the tournament, nice. which was awesome. It was great to have that sort of assistance. All right. Okay, so. Um, it's game time. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing is I use... Beads, little little, little glass beads, little D and D beads or whatever. Yeah, little glass beads. Those I bought these for Magic. When right. I played Magic like That's right. twenty odd years ago, um, and I just use these. I've got some. Somebody's got Bane Chant on them. Yep. I'll put that on there. Just, just a, a little a, reminder. Little reminder that you actually have it. Otherwise, you might forget. Yep. All right. Okay. So um, we are playing. Let's get straight into the game. Salt the earth. Salt the earth. So. Uh, Normally, Salt the Earth, you place these objectives before rolling sides. Um, we're not going to do that. Because we're doing a demo. We're doing a demo. All right, so let's roll off to see who places the first objective. All righty. I'm going to get my 12 out. I rolled a five. And my, th that's a four. Where's my three? You notice what he said there. We're rolling off to see who places the first objective. There's no ambiguity. It's not like choice. It's just, I rolled a five, so if I win this roll, I will place the first objective. Okay, and uh, the reason why this is important is that you have to place your objectives more than 12 inches apart from each other. So you can, with the placement of your first objective, crowd out an area of the table where your opponent may, yep. want, to, uh, may, may want to place you know, some objectives. So uh, this is never done on the clock, so I'm gonna roll a dice. You rolled a five, I rolled five. <laughs> of wow. course. I rolled a three. I'll roll a one. No, there you go. Five. So okay, you so I'm place the first. first one. Okay, so talking about looking at this table. So what we have here is we have some good line of sight blocking, but also some good charging off or shooting. Now, my army doesn't have a lot of shooting. Gareth's does. Okay. Uh, he will probably want to put maybe an objective up on this hill. Okay. So, I don't really want you to put an objective up on that hill. Yeah, so how do you stop so that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place an objective. See, that's clever because you notice in hill. this mission, you can put it anywhere. My side, his side, or we don't even have a side yet. Theoretically, we wouldn't have had a side. So these hills are height three. So my height two shooters cannot see over them. So they're mm -hmm. gonna have to get up to the hill or around the hill. Mm -hmm. All right, so I see Bard has placed one there. So then what am I gonna do? What am I looking at here? So I've got to place one here. So notice I went more than 12 inches away there. 
Okay. Um, all right, so I'm gonna place the next objective. Now, when units come into terrain, uh, any terrain, difficult terrain, or the forest, they count as, and these, they count as impassable when you move at the double. Right. The, to control the objective, you have to move in three inches. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna place this objective just over three inches back from the edge of it, which nice. means that somebody at the double cannot double at the double up to the edge and reach the objective. Clever. They're going to have to have Pathfinder to be able to make it that far. All right, so now I'm going to do something similar here. Okay, so I want to place that right in the middle. All right, so you've placed that over there. So you've got that over there. All right, mm -hmm. so now I'm looking at the table. This is going to be a good anchor for a flank. Center objective. Uh, this objective, the game, you can burn objectives as well. Yes. Except for the center one. So this becomes very important to control the center. So looking at this table, I'm thinking, okay, my line's pretty long. I could probably anchor my line across here and move, maybe move that way or just move up, uh, up to this line, okay, and control these objectives. Um, so what I'm going to do is... Uh, because this is here, I'm going to place my last objective over here. Now, the reason I don't put it all the way out the back here is a unit that's controlling this is probably not going to be contributing to the battle. Yeah, that's right. Unable to project threat because it's not very quick unless I put cavalry on it, but I'm going to want my cavalry out there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this one close enough that it is able to project a unit that may be sitting on it can project threat maybe react so one two three and uh but but it's still far enough back that it takes a concerted effort to get to so i'm using that so i have my last objective marker here and i'm going to place this as if i didn't know which side it was i was already playing at if i'm looking at this table right now we have basically four objective markers on this side of the board there's only two here so if i lose this roll off for sides i could get stuck with that side so i really need to try to balance this out a little bit mm -hmm. so i'm going to stick this one all the way back here all the way. Now, unfortunately, we've already rolled for sides, so you're probably not going to do that. Well, no, no. The reason I would do that is even if I, because oh, if, if I did playing. get that side, yeah. then I've at least got three ejectors over right there the and I can fight for the middle one. Yeah, that's what you do if we were playing it normally. If we were playing it normally. Yeah. So, yeah. so, but, you know, we're not this one, so, so that would I be mean, a consideration. Yeah, that would be a consideration. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. <clears throat> if we're going to put it one, two, three. I still, you know what? I like it. I like that back there. I do like that one back there, and the reason I like that one back there is because, like you said, um, that will hold a unit, who, whoever is there, mm -hmm. it will either force you to burn it or hold it. Yep. And I'm going to be in the same boat here because this is a fair distance back on a piece of terrain. And then, then my question is, uh, you have some fast, nimble units, don't you? I do. So that might be a good one. And in our last game, I played the same thing where I put some units further back on the table uh, to force you to keep some stuff back, which I went for later. Which you went for. Okay, Sam, uh, you're correct. We'll get into that when we uh, when we run into that actual uh, situation. At, yes, uh, good question, Sam. All those questions we want today because we can actually go through and, and show you. So perfect question. All right, so let's roll off to see who deploys first. All righty, here we go. So I will have won the roll off there for sides. Mm -hmm. So that's what you roll for there. That roll was to see who gets to choose the side. I chose this side, which I did win in our roll off earlier. Yep. So I'm picking this side because I love those four objectives right there. Okay. Um, that's why I would pick this side. But it also now means that I am going to be the person that has to deploy the first unit. All right. So. All right, so now we're, because we're doing a demo game, mm -hmm. right? One of the first things that we should do before you're on the clock, so if you're at a tournament or setting up to play somebody, what you're going to measure is you're going to measure the distance of your uh, of your field all the way across, in which we've already done that. Double, double check. The, it, this is 48. This is 48. So this actually is 48, which means your deployment is going to be 12 inches on each side. So I'm going to set up my 12 here, and what you want to do is, you notice I've got some dice here, 
You're going to put dice at the edge. That means you cannot set up past your dice. And you're going to go all the way across, so you're going to set up a line. Now, on our stream, we're so lucky because we have a little graphic that shows you where that line is, but you're not going to have this when you play. And also, if you have one of these measuring sticks, you can really bypass needing to do this because you can just go boom, boom, boom. But if you're using a tape measure, the act of having to you know, take it out, put it in all the time is you know, a bit of a a bit of a time uh, a time sink. And in this game, deployment is on the clock. It's on the clock. So we would have already been not going. Yet. Not yet, but we we yeah, will be. We will so be now going. I've got my line all the way across. Uh, I'm pretending I wouldn't have the graphic to help me out there. I'm just playing out of friends or whatever else. So that's my line, my but deployment line. So Bard's got his set up. So we're gonna click that clock and we'll be ready to go. Okay, here we go. All right, so you stop. So, now when I throw something down first, generally speaking, I'll talk you through it. I kind of like to throw down a few, not, I don't, I don't want to say useless uh, units, but units that just, they're chaff. I'm throwing Ch these chaff down. Or, yeah, they're gonna have a, a predictable uh, use. So. Remember we talked about fast cav earlier, that kind of stuff. These guys come with Pathfinder, so this terrain isn't going to bother them. That's a great unit to, for me to put down first because now he'll have to throw down either his chaff or something good. Yep. And uh, what I'm going to do is, because you're probably going to want to come through, I'm putting my unit... Phalanx? With Phalanx. <laughs> yep. <laughs> into here. Yep. <laughs> okay, so, and what I'm going to do is... I'm going to try and use this terrain here to crowd the ability for Gareth to put two units into this one. Yep. So what I'm lining it up with is I'm going to line it up with the edge of this building here. Because what happens is when, and my intention will be, I'll move up to probably here. My intention will be give the unit that's going to be attacking him no room to move to the side to allow him to put an additional unit in the front. So that's my one there. All right, so I'm going to be putting down my second unit. I'm just, uh, everybody noticed this unit here. This is an old first edition Kings of War unit, which they don't make these sort of bases anymore. So the actual base on this unit, you ignore the actual ridge here, the, the edge. They made these bases and then it was like, oh, well, actually you line up with the figs inside. This was probably to for all those folks that did have Warhammer figs mm -hmm. that they could just slot them right in. If you if you want it to be even simpler, what you can do is you can use the front edge yep. of the as for all your measurements all the way. Yeah. And uh, just ignore the side bits that are the side bits and all that. So Makes all. sense. Okay. All right. So So yes. I've countered Bard's move there by putting something here probably just to hold that. You're gonna have to come and take them out if you want this objective. Okay, so uh, this objective here is the one which is going to be the one which cannot be burnt. So this is the guaranteed one. I wonder if we should put the blue one in for that one. What do you think? Yeah, let's go for the blue one. So that everybody knows, hey, this one can never be burned. Okay. All right, so what I want is, and the way you control objectives is, for every unit has unit strength. In general, the larger the unit, the higher the unit strength. You have to have the most unit strength within um, uh, three inches of the objective, and that's not from the center, that's from the edge, uh, to control it. So, if I placed it like this, the best I'm ever gonna get within objective is going to be the one unit. Instead, if I put it like this, right. I'm going to be able to get two units into there. And make so, sure you read the mission criteria. Some missions, it has to be, the unit has to be majority in that area. Or yeah, for the, uh, for things like uh, the control one. The where control you have to one. So really read carefully. Bard, all he has to do is have any part of that unit within three and it counts. Okay. Unit strength is also a new part of this game that only came in at the end of second edition and was introduced at Kings of War Historical first. Yeah. The idea that units now carry a value to them to help collect objectives and loot counters and all that. Brilliant addition to the game. Okay, so there's that one. All right, so Bart's put his center down, and I think it's probably a good time for me to put my center down. My trusty Nyads. This is the folks with Ensnare and all that good stuff, and I'm going to do the same thing as Bard did here. I'm going to, because I'll try to get two units to contest that center zone. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is uh, I need 
to ensure that my battle line is going to have some inspiring. Now, I'm kind of spoilt for choice in a way. I am able to, I have a, uh, I also have a regiment uh, of Sworn Guardians. They also have inspiring. Nice. So I'm going to put that, looks like that one's out a bit. I'm going to put that there. Now, I'm placing these units so there's a little bit of space in between them. Right. Enough for me to put an individual if I need to, but more importantly, to allow me to pivot. Because you cannot end a pivot uh, when you're maneuvering on top of one of your friendly units or any units, unless uh, you're flying. And for those of you who watched the stream last week, you'll see that I made some mistakes there. With you, and, and it's important when you bring in new units and, and you're playing with something you're not used to playing, really leave yourself enough gap to be able to pivot and see through and be able to get things through. Uh, otherwise, you could end up, you know, doing what I did in the game there, which was locking yourself out, blocking yourself out. Uh, I love when I see somebody who's put some big stuff behind some you small do. stuff at the front. <laughs> cool, I don't need to worry about the big stuff for a while. And he's a good poker player too, because he really didn't let, uh, let that on at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so there is a unit here that I have to really think about, really think about, because they have Scout to start. Mm. They have Pathfinder and they have Scout. So I think I'll be putting this guy down here. Yeah, right there. Okay, next thing, I've got this objective over here, which is kind of towards the back of the table. Mm -hmm. So, what can I afford to put back? A deck chair unit. Normally, I would probably put this unit back here, but I'm needing to try and block up this section here against those little nimble fellas. Now, they may come around, but I've got other units that I will use for that sort of thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these guys as a deck chair. They can't contribute to the battle, but what they will do is they'll hang back. Now, what I want to make sure also is that I'm within nine inches of that objective because I can't have a double to get to it. So yeah, I can be I can be right at the back edge of the table, put myself as far away as possible from the enemy um, and still make it in one move to be within range. To get those points at the end of the game. Yep, so I'm going to put these guys right at the back. Now, I'm also going to offset them so I can get a second unit in there if he ends up getting some unit strength down the side of the table. All righty. Okay. So this is a unit of ice elementals. All right. So they're going to be pretty strong. Pretty strong. They actually have a magic attack as well as shooting attack, uh, which is limited range, but they still have all that. Okay. All right, so I'm going to need something because because of the amount of uh, stuff around this area, I'm going to need something a little more solid on this side of the table. There they are, the big old. So what I'm going to do is, I am going to put this unit of ogres here. Nice. And Sam, I have deployed this unit here, also for your benefit, so we can actually see that question in play what you're talking about to be able to see over a hill with units that are either the same height of the hill or lower so height three units like this one or height two units like any other shooting it this is a height two shooting unit over here they need to be able to see over a hill and there is one way to do that and i'll show you when it comes to my turn okay. all right so now realistically what we're going to do is we're going to if we we're playing proper tournament type style play this is a great time for you to put down things like your individuals to burn your choices so that Bard is still putting hopefully his top choices on the field so I get to see his army deployed before I start playing my, putting my big pieces down. So I'm going to put my queen down here because she inspires, she heals, she also has a shooting attack, height 2 shooting right there. She has the periscope which makes her height 3 for shooting. Okay, and similarly, uh, anything that doesn't really matter uh, to where it gets deployed, you can put on the table. Yep. Now, I have, I have some choices here. So these hills block line of sight for me to most things. So I've got basically a line of sight this way, line of sight through that way, line of sight through that way, and line of sight this way. Now, the What's objective... What's the range on that part? 48 inches. So 48 inches. So I can inches. hit quite a bit of the table. Nice. So uh, with this unit here, 
If I placed it kind of towards the middle, it might get neutralized fairly early. If I placed it near an objective, it incentivizes somebody to come after it. If I put it out of the way, some distance back, with yeah, a reasonable line of sight, it gets goes onto the hills, so I can start shooting him, which may also, if I had more of them, may force you to stay behind those hills, which would be an advantage for the rest of my army. Nice. Because once you get onto the hills, I'm going to be able to start doing stuff about it. So what I'll do is I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to put this unit. Mm, let's go, let's go. Yeah, let's go here, and I might bait out a fast unit of Gareth. Well, actually, by placing that, that's actually a good play on Bard's part because he does bait me to do something. He does make me react to his deployment choice. So that is a shooting, and especially with this mission where I'm gonna be trying to hold up and take these items in the center, I don't wanna give him free reign all games shooting at me. So my counter to that is to put my handy dandy trusty bolt thrower in play here. So maybe I can take that off the board become, before it becomes a serious and a problem. Okay, all right. Okay, so now I've got uh, I've got a couple big units, which I'm probably going to save towards the end. Uh, and now, so in general, it's better to place your slower units first on the table yep. and s leave your more maneuverable stuff to be placed on the table later. So now I'm getting to my maneuverable stuff, all my characters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this priest down here to give inspiring and some healing to this little battle group. So, and he has three of those individual characters that he could just plop down to make me burn three of my picks, which is what I talked about earlier. So I'm looking at that now going, he's got to get rid of those before I get to see his big stuff. So I guess I'll put my pack hunters down here and keep, always look, what am I, where are my tokens? Where am I fighting for? So I've got a token here, token here, token here, token here. Chances of me getting to that back stuff because he's defended so well there, it, it could be really tough. So I am going to put my pack hunters um, and, and, and my defense here is uh, EG did not have any snow. Okay. <laughs> Okay. That it was my intent to get them done for today, but they they have they've been out of the snow so for a while. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm gonna put those pack hunters there. Okay. So you're actually building a little bit of uh, a little bit of force over. A little side defense of the force over there. Okay. I'm going to place uh, High Chaplain Augustus, who will be um, a bit of healing, and a bit of inspiring. Um, it's kind of redundant, but the healing may uh, may be important over this side of the table, uh, especially because of those objectives there. Uh, so I'm going to place him here. Nice. Okay. Well, I have a second unit of uh, frost elementals here, so they are going to go down here as well. Because that... That tells you where pretty much what I'm fighting yeah. for is that. So you've got like maybe three unit strength, three unit strength each, so six unit strength that you're going to be projecting. Committing here. for that one or with middle, four here. Yeah, the middle one could go to yeah. either side, really. All right, okay. So um, now I'm going to start putting my maneuver group together. And what am I going to do with that? So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put Crimson the Huntress down here. Well, then she's nasty. So, and again, we, were, we talk about all the objective counters. Count them out, folks. We've got seven objective counters. That's the most points you can score in the game. And that's before, in this mission, we can burn those objective counters. So keep a running tally. Uh, games have been was lost, and, and you've, you've gone from a win to a tie because you didn't realize one objective got burned. So seven on the table right now, and make sure you keep track of how many of those get burned. All right, so, well, looks like we need, again, I'm pretty much telegraphing. Where am I going for, Bard? You're going for the center and this. That's okay. it, right? Like, all right. Okay. All right, so I am going to... Those are Huskulls, by the way. Yep. Really, really tough, heavy troops. Okay, so that's some pretty tough, heavy troops. Oh, Richard, Richard has snow. Okay, well, good to know. <laughs> Good to know, buddy. Yeah, I've got three pack. I've got three of these pack hunters. I've got to snow up. So yeah, I will definitely uh, take advantage of that. If you have some extra, Richard, pr appreciate it. Okay. Um, 
Let me think about this. I gotta be I gotta be smart on this. So this is what I'm gonna do. I've got this object these stuff. So I can try and be sneaky and like just grab and, and, and destroy some stuff quickly. Or uh, I can try and usually maneuver groups, you want them to flank what's going out there. So um, I am going to I'm going to choose what I can easily redeploy and put that on the table for starters. Okay, and these guys are flying. So flying units can uh, leave area terrain at the double. No problem. Right. That's a good rule to bring up. So if you have something with the fly keyword, it can start its turn in terrain. It, because it's flying up and out, it doesn't get hindered as long as it doesn't land in any terrain. Yeah. So if it, it leaves leave, the terrain, no it can problem. go full distance. And if it's got nimble, it still gets the nimble keyword as well. So a good thing for you to remember, flyers in terrain, I still got to worry about him. Kay. Okay, so, well. Uh, Rim the giant. I am really, really trying to... He, Harim is not only a giant, he's an inspiring giant. So we want to keep him somewhere where he can help inspire stuff. So we're going to put him here. Um, he's got a breath attack as well. Bam. Okay. So as we're going through, one of the things that you may want to, even new players, I would suggest Sam and, and Kim and anybody else out there that's new, is keep an eye on your deployment time when you're using the clock. So normally Bart and I do our deployment in two or three minutes tops each. Obviously today you can see what the chatting and everything else has done to our clock, but it's good to note how much time. So you should have pre-deployment worked out in your heads a little bit. So you wanna be efficient in your deployment because that is time you're using that could be used in important game time in turn five or six or even the uh, uh, yummy turn seven that occasionally comes in. All right, so I'm down to two drops. And Bart, how many drops do you have left? Two. So we have two drops each. And I think because he's got lots of fast stuff over here, I kind of have to counter with my fast stuff over here as well, which is my wolves. All right. Okay. Wolves will go wide. Okay, so. What I'm gonna have to do here is. So keep in mind as I'm doing this, fellas, he, Bard, Bard's doing his, where are all your inspiring? I have inspiring here. I have inspiring here. I don't have inspiring over here or here. So I've got a tough choice for my last deployment, so which is my last source of inspiring. It's going on one side or the other. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, you've got that, you've got that, you've got quite a, quite a bit over there. Okay, um, you know what? I'm going to place... this unit here. Alrighty, my last choice of inspiring. Does it go here? Does it go here? Mm. I think with the commitment that Bard has there, I need to put my inspiring somewhere about this. Now this guy is very inspiring, which I could check. It's nine inch. Nine inch bubble. That nine inch bubble means I'm going to be able to inspire them and I'm going to be inspiring them just in case Harim has to go somewhere else. This is it. So basically you folks can see that I've almost given up here. That is too much for me to tangle with, so I'm going to be going for that side in the center. Okay. That's a that's a judgment. That's a choice that I made. Okay. All right. So uh, you have one more deployment, Bart. I have one more deployment. Okay. Just, just checking something here. All righty. Okay. Because uh, yeah, something on it says need. Uh, someone messaged me saying they needed to sign in, which seems strange. Okay. Full screen projection. No, nope, the settings aren't set to do that. Okay. That's weird. Anybody else have problem getting in this morning? Uh, we've had somebody, a uh, member said they had to try to sign in. Okay, um, you know what? Maybe I sent the, uh, I sent wrong link. Let me, let me, let me just find this one second. It's gonna pause. 
the clock. No worries, no worries. Set Sorry. Up here. We just want to make sure folks that are trying to get in are able to get in. Okay. Where's my Where's my post? Come on. Do you want me to address while you're doing that? Do you want me to address Sam's question that yeah, he had asked it. earlier? Okay, Sam, here's your question. Directly answer your question right here. So see these fellas here. These fellas here cannot see over this hill right now because they are height three. The hill is height three, which means equal height or less, I cannot see over that hill. Okay, now I can see his big stuff. If he had a dragon right here, because that dragon is height six, I can see the dragon. I just cannot see anything here. Um, so what I would do, all I have to do is if I move here, so the center point of this unit, right here, you see it? If that is touching the hill, that means I can see over the hill now. I can also be seen. Now, it affects, if I'm shooting, I will have a cover modifier because I am shooting, I can, I can partially see over. So I will have a minus one to hit things because I'm basically just sort of popping my head over or if I have bows that I'm just sort of popping over but I'm having an obscured shot. It also means that I'm benefiting cover here as well. Even though I'm the same height as this hill, I'm sort of, like I said, popping my head over. So I get a minus one to hit, but I also get a minus one to be hit by shooting elements. Here's the other thing though. Let's say Bard has a unit uh, here. All right, I'm using this measuring tape. And uh, Bard, uh, I elect in the next turn to charge that unit. I do not get the hill bonus. I do not get the hill bonus because I was not counted as being on the hill. You also do not get the elevation bonus. I don't get the elevation bonus it's either. For shooting either, so. No, so basically, as I said, this will allow me to shoot over the hill, does not give me any other hill benefits other than the fact that I will be able to claim cover from that hill, but I also have to give away cover because I'm shooting over the hill. So if you want the benefit to the hill, you've got to be on the hill. Yeah. Does so, that help? Yeah. So if you were back here. Yep. So you could see over the hill and yep. I had a height two unit here. Yep. And a height two character behind it. Yep. You cannot see the height two character no. because you do not count as being high. Well, in this case, you could because you're height three, but. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's, <laughs> that's right. You can see it. But if it, those were height two infantry yeah. with bows trying to shoot over, the height two would block it. Once you're on the hill, you count as three heights higher, then you'd be able to see over. Because then that would be three plus three in this uh, situation, six, which would be two, six. Or, three by two. or let's say if it was a two, it would be three plus two, five can see over uh, anything there. Just the tip of it, uh, Sam. Inspiring bubble. Just the tip, just that's it. Inspiring, you just have to be within uh, six inches or nine Harding inches unit. in that case. Uh, that's it. And yeah. uh, me, I'm placing down my last unit, right? All right. That's it, your last unit. Okay, so you really packed it up on that side of that the That side, which, which again, I mentioned, I, I made a choice here. I've really got to try to contest and fight here, fight the center, and this is what I call my deny flank. My deny flank means I'm not really fighting to take anything there. I'm going to try to hold this if I can. I'm going to make you earn it, but that's it. Okay. And uh, you know what? I'm going to put this unit right there. Any historical fans out there will know Napoleon and, and Alexander love to go from the right, uh, strong center, and then wheel in on the right and try to smash through. That's yeah, what that, I'm doing. That was the, uh, the place of honor in the old battle line. The it's companions, in ancient, right? In ancient history. Yeah. Okay, so let's put, put those back in here. All right, so we have finished deployment. Okay, so three. Let me so we're done our deployment. That is, for us, that's pretty slow. Uh, Bard, Bard at 13, 12 and a half minutes to deploy normally takes you two, three, maybe four at yeah. the most. Yep. Uh, I'm the same. I like to get mine done between two and three minutes, and I will actually time that. I will have my battle line. I'll go over my list, and I'll have my battle lines ahead of time with some small tweaks or adjustments according to the opponent. Okay. All right, so let's uh, tidy up with our, our dice on the table. That's right, so we Ooh. take our, our X amount of dice off here. 
That's our de deployment dice. I'm actually a little chilled in here. Got Consider the heater on? Considering going get a jacket. You know oh, yeah. I I'm actually going to go do that. I'm going to go get a jacket. You're going to get a jacket. I'll be right back. Yeah. We're, we're hovering about uh, three or four degrees in, in Victoria, which for us is, is quite cold. Uh, normally at this time of year, we, we're out golfing and all sorts of stuff uh, during uh, February, March. The, the cherry blossoms are starting to bloom, but right now we've had a cold, uh, cold year. I, I, and I'm saying that because I know Kim's in the house from Norway. You're just laughing at me like, yeah, that's 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 uh, that's nice summer for us right there. You know, uh, four degrees Celsius sounds really nice. Um, and I believe Andreas is from Poland. So yeah, I can't be complaining too much about the weather, right, to you guys. Oh, no problem, Sam. A any questions you come up with during the game, that's why we're here, because that's a that was a really great, great question about the hill. So anything like that that you've got, shout them out to us. That's why we're doing this. Okay, hopefully it still won't click too much as I'm putting this back on. There we go. Okay, oh, here we go. Already. All right, so. Now we roll off. Now speed. we roll off. So here comes the one of the most important rolls of the game is who gets the choice of going first. So this is actually a choice. So I won this roll. So I'm going to talk you through this. This is a mission where I can burn objectives on either side if I have the unit strength, except for the center one. So, oh, I didn't do scout, so we forgot that. Uh, yeah, and you I, have to do scout before you roll. Yeah, we, so, go ahead. so basically I would have done that scout. So the only things in my army with scout are my pack hunters. Okay. Uh, let's see, Pathfinder, Stealthy, do they have scout? No, they, uh, no, they don't have scout, so good. It's only the... Um, uh, these these fellas so scout the really cool thing about scout that I want to show you here Let's pretend see this house here. Let's pretend if that house was here You can walk through that house as if it wasn't even there yeah, your you scout ignore terrain. you ignore terrain altogether So this unit here can go up to 12 inches in now I Have to be careful though because what happens if I go 12 inches out? Yes. Yes, and I remember I would have done this before we rolled off the seal goes first So that means I could go up to this distance away I could go 12 inches out here guys, and I've done this. I've made this mistake early days so much So this is a little further than 12. That's parallax error there. This is why you get the little sticks. They're awesome Okay now, I could run out 12, but what am I doing if I run out 12? No, Both of these guys are just going to eat them. They can charge up to 20. So, again, this is a shout out to one of our great, great players in our league named uh, Dan Wright. Dan Wright uh, sort of showed, schooled us on all of this. He used to do this with all his threat ranges. So this is the threat range that this possesses, roughly. This is the threat range that this possesses, the big flyers. These guys have a charge of what, 16, right? These guys, yeah, 16. 16. So I've measured and I've placed dice there in an approximation to let me know where's the safe area that these guys can go. Now, no, maybe I want these folks to walk out and go and maybe draw a big dragon out to charge. But really make sure you're making that as a conscious choice there, not as a choice where you're gonna get caught. So in this situation, that is 20. They have a range. I am actually going to put myself in range here of both of these guys to charge me, okay? So I'm going to put myself there. Why? Because I have a lot of stuff that could hit back. I'm going to sacrifice that if he wants to tr charge his big dragon. So that's my scout move. Now we would go into regular move because uh, we yeah. would roll off and, now. And for note, scout moves are on the clock. They are on the clock. So I would have lost some time there. But again, we're playing, we're playing loose clock today. We're just, uh, here we go. So now I've got to decide. All right, start the time. Start the time, sir. Here we go. So again, you see what I did earlier? Good luck to you, sir. Have fun. This is a 20. All right. And I may even actually, his little arc, you remember that little arc, your little arc thing? Could yep. you show me your arc there, Bard? Because maybe I want to get out of your arc. So where, there it is. So, wow. 
I am not going to be able to get out of Europe. But that Phoenix is not, he's not really a beat stick, is he? No. So the thing I'm worried about is that. So I am actually going to go 18 as far as I can here, almost. And that's less than 18. I want to be able to turn. Now, am I in that dragon's arc, do you think? No, no, no. no. So this is a good thing to move up fast because that Phoenix wants to charge me. I'm, I'm, I'm game for that. All right, these guys. Checking. There we go. Nope. They're going to go here. Frostfang Lord's going to go here. Shooting is just going to shoot at you. These fellas here will march as much as they can so that they are not seen by the hill. Mm -hmm. However, now now here's a good point where I would be like, you know, I want to be, my intent is just to be outside there. Yep, now see good. what I've done here. This is not a take back, see, because- Still in the same unit. It's still the same unit. I haven't moved on to another unit and I have elected to move that. I can't move it back to where I started. I have to move this unit and now. And the way you gain, you use the units in this game is you activate a unit and complete its move before That's right. moving on to the next. So you can't move a unit, then move another unit, then switch. Then the go back. back. Yeah, none of now, this fudginess. If you wanted to be very specific, you could either mark the back of your units. Yep. So you could do this yep. and go, okay, I'm not moving this unit, but I want to see what happens. So I may move this unit here, leave that marker there, put another marker here and go, what if I did that? Because you haven't said, you said specifically, this one may come back. I've marked it. Well, I just want to see where- Even the, you can pre-measure, yeah. Anytime during the game. Because um, it's on my clock, yeah, right? The, it's actually better to have what they call proxy bases. Proxy bases. Just spare templates which are of the right size. Yeah. You which got you some? Can use, which I believe I've got, I have some somewhere. Then actually, I have one right here. Is, you know, in a game of what could be millimeters, by, there it is. Uh, by moving stuff about. Here it is. You've got some? Got okay. one right here. So, so this is an exact proxy base. Again, you can 3D print these up, fellas. So this here is the same base size as my uh, Naiad Horde. So what I could do is, um, I can basically measure this here. So let's say these guys can go, uh, they can go, they can, they can move up to, uh, what, are they, what can Naiads move? It's been so long, five inches. Mm -hmm. So I can measure 10 inches out here, put this base down, which is better than moving this, and yep. go, okay, I, I, I want to see where that goes. Now I'll put a proxy base here and I'll put that down for them. I haven't moved anything. That's always the good thing, because as soon as you move stuff, you, you might have been like two millimeters out. You've moved it and you haven't moved it back exactly to where it was. Then, you know, you could have some dishonest players. I haven't run into them. No. But uh, I, I expect that as King's War becomes more popular, we'll, we probably will run into those players. You're better off to use proxy bases than shifting stuff back and forth. Just for So this, this is probably what Bard is talking about. Grab some of these, print them out to match your bases. If you want to be really specific and calculating in your moves, and I've these guys at the Masters do that this all the time. They have a base for every, a proxy base for every single uh, uh, unit in their army and they lay everything down it's on their clock so you can do that if you want yep. it's eating your time though so you need to be wary of that and this might be why masters has an extra 10, uh, 10, 10 minutes yeah minutes, whatever that's using. right that's right yeah okay so uh i have moved that i'm ready sir to start moving my other stuff okay, so yeah. these we ran down quite a bit of my time did we? Yeah. Oh, then just just leave leave it on mine for a little. It doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. We just we're we're that. playing fun, right? Yeah. So ten. So again, I'll put this little stick down here. These are going to march up here. Now, what I want to be careful of is, am I? I'm going to back them up because I don't want to give you access to my flank. Mm -hmm. Because had I moved there, chances are this thing. This big nasty dragon would be able to hit me in the flank, get 20 attacks. I don't get my ensnare, that would be a disaster. Yeah. So be wary of that. Mm -hmm. All right, so here we go, 12 inches. Uh, no, these guys can only go six because they cannot march. Because they have shamble. Shamble. Okay, same thing. All right, and the queen, she will go up six. And I'm going to put her 
so that she's uh, her her base is on the hill. Actually, she'll be all the way on the hill. There we go. And she's an individual, so she'll be. I just knock them though. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're gonna stay right there. What about Harim? Harim, he will, he will just walk up six. All right. So now we're gonna. That's my movement. My movements are all done. Okay. I'm not going to. Well, my int I, here's at the turn. I could, I could say it is my intent to burn this at the end of the turn. That way, I let Bard know my intent. That way, if I forget, mm -hmm. he will be able to say, yep. "Oh, you did say you were going to burn that." Yep. I'm saying right now it is my intent not to burn it, yeah. so I'm leaving it as it is. Play the game friendly. Friendly, right? You can play competitive and friendly. You don't have to be a douchebag. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to do shooting. So we've got a bolt thrower here. We've got two shots with my bolt thrower. So <coughs> I have inadvertently, see these fellas here? These, uh, they have blocked my line of sight to that which was probably, or did I forget to move them? I think I did forget to move them. Oh, well. You can uh, move them. Um, you haven't started shooting yet. It's still the movement phase. Well, see, that that's, that's, that's a sporting thing to do. So I will, they can pivot once, and then they can go up to six, and they will just go here. Am I 16? Yeah, you know, I'm okay with them charging out because mm -hmm. I want to shoot. And here's where the laser would come in handy, because with shooting, we measure. Good. You're still going to get cover. Yep. Okay. So we want to shoot and we want to shoot. So we'll start with those uh, uh, Icekin Hunters. Uh, the Icekin Hunters have steady aim, 24 inch range, 10 attacks. So 10 dice, mm -hmm. which I have counted out. These 10 green dice will do just perfect. I need with them, um, you're going to get cover because I'm not at this, I'm not lined up perfectly right. here. Yeah, you have to be against it. I have to be against it. So against an obstacle to deny someone on the other side cover. So I need fives to hit you. I get to re-roll ones because they have elite. All right, so I'm gonna take the ones out first. So those are my re-rolls and then every, all the ones, twos, threes, and fours are misses. This is a good roll. So your range value is uh, four. Four, on those guys? four on the, uh, uh, where is it? Icekin hunters is four. They're right. elves. They're, oh, okay. So I was going to say for humans, that's good. That's yeah. But they're actually elves. Northern Alliance. So okay. missed. Okay. So these are for wounding. What do I need to wound? Okay. So the siege artillery's defense is four. So I need fours. Two wounds. Two wounds. Okay, now this is where new players can sometimes mess this up. I'm not going to roll for the test on that unit yet. It's too early. I've got to do all my other shooting and spells. Yep. Thanks a lot, Kim. I appreciate that. Okay, so any other spe shooting? Yes, my bolt thrower is going to fire. He will get cover because I'm shooting over that fence. Mm -hmm. So I got two shots. I need fives and sixes. Normally, I need fours. Again, that's an, that, those are elves. Rerolling ones. So I get to reroll that one one. The other was a miss. No, all misses. So no bolt thrower hits there. Okay. Okay. Now, what else am I? Any other shooting? Yes. She is a walking bolt thrower. Okay. Question is. I think the only thing that won't, I'm on the hill, so basically I can shoot at whatever I want. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna shoot at that, those calf. Okay. Okay, so those calf, I'm gonna get two shots. And she has blizzard two. One hit. So her, she is, her blizzard is D3. So I'm gonna get three and it's pierce two. Pierce two. Pierce two, like a bolt thrower. Okay, the defense for those fellas is, uh, Valerian skirmishes is four. So twos, uh, only one. One wound. Okay, however, we're gonna put a little token on them because they're frozen. Yep. That's and this would token. be frozen too, but it's not gonna move. It's not gonna move. It's not gonna right. move. So, and one thing I'm going to do is, as uh, as the shooting phase goes along, to remember what you need to do a morale, a morale check on, it's handy just to put a couple of dice stacked on top of each other next to that unit. 
Well, that's nice because he's reminding me that I have to do tests on those. All right, so I've done all, this is all of my magic. These guys could shoot, but it's only a 10 inch range. 10 inch range shooting from him, so he's not gonna be able to shoot. Nothing, these guys only have a 12 inch range with their spears, so at not in range. So we're gonna do the test now. We're gonna start with the bolt thrower. Okay, 9-11. Nine, it's a 9-11, how many wounds have I got Two wounds, so you so, need a seven to waver. And a nine to break. break. And nothing. nothing. Okay, so they're okay. And what about these fellas? Probably pretty high, right? Uh, yeah, they're, I think they're probably 14, 16. Let me check, 13, 15. 13, 15, and I only did one and wound on them. Nope, no, no okay. break tests there, not even so wavered. they're all good. So there's no combat, that is my turn. I click the clock over. Okay, so this may have come in very, very important, this eye. So my move is not a nine normally, so I could go 18. Oh, it's not gonna come into play. You cut me down to 16. Okay, I am at the doubling. Do they have Pathfinder? They're not going through the, the woods. Okay. Which is why they're oh, nice. there. Oh, nice, nice. Okay. And oh, so notice what he's doing here. You can walk through your own unit. Uh, and march, march or at the double, you can only not charge through your own unit. That's right. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm coming up here. Okay, so I'm just within three because I'm going to sacrifice this unit to burn that objective. To burn that objective, nice. And uh, by the way, you already burnt that one. I didn't burn it. It was my intent not to. Oh, I thought yeah, you yeah. said your intent was to burn No, it. no. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry, that's okay. Okay. All right, so, well, my intent is I'm going to burn that one. Yes, and there's nothing I can do about that because he has the unit strength. He has uh, probably three unit strength, maybe two of that because it's a shooting Oops, cab unit. Back there. And I have nothing. I didn't get within range. I should have surged one of these to stop it. Okay, uh, so, um, yeah, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to have to go up a bit. I'm going to... But he asked, that's a big choice for him to do that. He's going to basically say he's going to sacrifice that cav unit to rid this token off the board. Okay, you know what? I'm, also just, I'm going to go all the way up. Welcome, Kurt. Thanks very much. This unit's going to come up. Hey, he is going to come up. Five. Uh, they're still frozen. Look at that. That's a beautiful center there coming in. We know those. That that's an anvil. That's what we call an anvil. They'll hold for quite some time. This guy's going to come up to five. Okay, your little foxes have 18, uh, 20 inch range? No, these guys are only eight, so 16 inch charge. Okay, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move up to just with just within 18. Nice. So she can shoot it Shoot, then. and nothing I can do about yep. it. Yep, uh, these guys are going to come up to right uh, up to six so right over to here this 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 will be nice i get to and point out a mistake i made with this unit i made a mistake in deployment it was a very small little mistake but it's going to count against me right now as soon as bard goes to do his shooting i'll point it out okay um all right so over here uh let's move you guys up I'll sustain my battle line Okay, all right, this unit here. Okay, so I'm gonna be able to go to about there. Okay, it's gonna pivot. I can go up to 10, whoops. About there, and pivot back to about there. So blocking or charging into this unit. Uh -huh. This unit here, it's gonna pivot. Can go up to 10. What we're going to see is a combined breath attacks here. <laughs> On those. Okay. <laughs> so I've done that and I've protected that unit from uh, some some of the charging that could potentially go into it. Nice. Though it's not really something which is worth protecting. Okay, so I've done all my movements. So it's worth checking from one side of the table. Move, 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 move. Everybody's moved. I've, I've kept my inspiring bubbles going and all that sort of stuff. Uh, this unit here. So this unit here is facing a dilemma. Uh, this bolt thrower can shoot them without cover. I am better off this turn to move up. I'm not going to get cover next turn, 
So I'm not quite more than half over, but the turn after, I will be. So hopefully they'll hold for that period of time. Okay, so all my movement's done. So now it's the shooting phase. Crimson the Huntress is taking a poke okay. at those five. So this was the moment, this is what I was talking about. And this was a simple error made in deployment. <clears throat> when I deployed these foxes, if you'll note here, the unit, as Bard pointed out over there, has to be half or more in cover, okay? They are not. All I had to do really was just deploy them a little further over here, just and then back, and these guys, they could be a quite a bit over there because their center's here. I could share this so that this unit who has stealthy would also benefit from cover, but they don't now because I deployed them off the cover. So he would have a minus two when shooting this unit. Instead, he's gonna get a minus one. Um, stealthy. Because stealthy. Okay, so normally mm. I hit on four, so I hit on fives. Mm. And I believe, um, let me just have a look, a simpler hunter. Uh, she has slayer range, which doesn't matter right now. No. And as melee only, so fives. Fives. And I get one hit. So that would have been huge if, 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 uh, he still would have had one hit, so it, it worked out okay. Okay, all right. Uh, and piercing one. Defense. Twos. So twos. Or all three. Takes a wound. Takes a wound. So remember that one needs to take a unit. This unit moved up. Only five. So what I'll do is I'll take this token and I'll stand it up. It means something has to be done with that yeah, unit. Yeah, it's kind of like the double dice thing. Yeah. All right, so um, they're within range. So I'm going to have ten attacks from those fellas. Same thing going at this unit? Yep. Okay. So normally they hit on fives. So sixes, right? So you have stealthy sixes, but I move. So sevens. Oh, they don't have steady aim. No. Ah. So whenever you go above six to, to do something, you basically half the number of attacks and you need sixes. Half so needing sixes. I have Got ten it. attacks normally, so it's going to be five attacks hitting on sixes. And I get one. One. Okay. So one hit, again, you need twos. Their defense on these guys is only twos. So oh, another one. Another wound. Okay. Okay, all right. So what am I going to do now? Okay, so I am going to cast from this guy is going to cast on here. Now, your line of sight is from the center of your base. Normally, uh, say this fella had been like over here a bit, I wouldn't be able to see this unit. Height three. But they are height three. That's right. So I'm able to see it. So, yep. and you don't use, uh, spells um, generally follow the shooting rules, but the modifiers to them are per spell. Yep. Healing does not suffer from cover issues. No. So he has, uh, High Chaplain Augustus, he has heal five. One, two, three, four, five, I need fours. Need fours. And I get none. Wow, you didn't want to heal them. Well, I guess he knows they're gone anyway, he's, so. He's going, yeah, okay, I'm pretend I'm healing him. <laughs> just, just for morale purposes. That way, that way, if they happen to survive the battle, yep. they're not coming after him, but why aren't you healing me? Okay, all right, so I'm moving my way down my line. It's always good to, in the shooting phase, to work your way down the line because morale checks happen at the end of the phase. So just for being thorough, you work your way down Bart, what, the line. Can I ask you a question? What happens right now if you made a mistake uh, and we were playing ser serious tournament game, mm -hmm. and you had asked me and rolled this test. You had rolled roll, this roll test. Roll that test. Um, normally, if you're, you, you could say that, well, you've already ended the morale phase, uh, ended the shoot shooting phase. phase. Uh, but if you're, Kings of War doesn't really um, accept you being that douchey to you. <laughs> really, it's it's more of a friendly game. So yeah, you're supposed to do it at the end. What you're, as as a sportsman, you would say, no, no, you do it at later or you let them continue their shooting. Um, or what you would what what say is- You're making a choice there of being yeah. a good guy. Yeah. What you want to be careful at that Bard is trying to very politely say uh, is, you don't want to run into the guy that's going to say to you because yeah. you made the mistake, not him. Mm -hmm. You, uh, sorry, uh, your shooting and your your My magic phase, phase is, is over. over because the tests are not done for the shooting and the magic phase until the end of all shooting and magic. So that's why we, as sporting players, I'll put this up. You notice he put the dice up. That is to help remind your opponent to say, don't do the tests yet. Yeah. So, okay, so I've done that. So I'm working my way down the line. So I've done heal. Not really, though. Uh, come down here. Uh, have any more healing? No, I don't. But I have some shooting. So. Lots of shooting. Dragon breath. 
Okay, so my dragon has 10 attacks. So the high pal paladin has... It is, Todd. Todd, that's a great idea. Yep. Yes, taking variable units. Again, the great thing about Kings of War is uh, the more utility, the more variability you put in your army, the more options you're going to yeah, have. Yeah, more tools you have. More tools you're going to have. So more yes, choices. multiple heights is a great idea. Yeah, if you're building your first army for Kings of War, it's very good to go with a, uh, a toolkit list. Um, there, is an, uh, there is an article on victoriawargaming.com on what is a toolkit list, which gives you an idea, because you'll get the maximum amount of learning from that first army. A good, a good example of that, uh, really simply, Todd, is if you think about it, cavalry is height, most cavalry is height three. Infantry, most infantry, not monstrous infantry or anything like that, is height two. If you have cavalry behind infantry, one of the benefits of cavalry is that you're shielded by the infantry and you're going to have more likely the, char the ability to charge your opponent because they can see, they can see over. Yeah, you can shift you guys out the way and charge through. That's right. right. Okay, so I'm going to do my dragon attacks on your wolves. There it is. Lots of 10 oh, attacks. 10 attack, hitting on fours. Now, normally when you move, you get minus one to hit. Not However, dragon. steady aim. Yep. Uh, gets rid of that. So I need fours and I need lots, lots of four pluses here. Please not a lot of... Okay, so yeah, one better than average. I'm good with that. That is good. Defense of three. Uh, defense of four on those boys. Wolves. Yeah, wolves have four. That's pretty damn good. That is good. For, fur, For a fast cap. Okay. No, nice conversion though. Five wounds. Five wounds. And, and, that, and the reason we're saying nice conversion, well, you've got more to come. I do. All right, so the next thing I have is I have the Phoenix. It has 10 attacks as well. Steady aim as well. Okay. Um, so, yeah, what is it? Steady aim, fire sparks, 18 inch range to the 12 of the dragon. Uh, and hitting on force. Very nice. No piercing. I'm hoping you don't spike on this one. No, I rolled perfectly average on that. And let's see how it goes on this. And again, fours to wound. One, two, three wounds. Three wounds. Well, that's going to be pretty good. You got him up to eight wounds from that combined okay. breath attacks there. Okay, now my question is, can I see anything with my piece of artillery? Okay, so I'm not going to be able to see past my dragon, and I can't see there. This is where the laser is beautiful. Okay, so really the only thing I can see is the guys on the hill. Right. And why is that, Bard? Because this, their height two. Yep. So their height two. Yep. But their height three on a hill. On a hill. So remember, we said this earlier. Height three on height three makes this unit height six. So he can see over all that, and this is the only target he really has. And I'm up in range. And Perfect. You're not going to get cover. Nope. Don't. No way. I'd get cover okay. there. And also, the one of the reasons you wouldn't get cover is because this unit has indirect, so it shoots. Over. Yep. All right. So uh, it's actually it's not called indirect anymore. What's it called? Uh, indirect basically means you cannot be shot at if uh, you cannot shoot something that's within 12 inches because your arc goes over. But it has ignores, uh, ignores obscured. Obscured is if you have something in between you and another unit. Right. Okay. Uh, uh, Richard, that's a great point. Uh, I would rather defeat my opponent in their best game. And this is how most of us sort of feel in their best game than a gotcha moment or, oh, you forgot, you know, the same thing, it's a gotcha moment. Oh, you forgot your rule. Oh, you forgot to do this. Oh, you rolled at the wrong time. Yeah, you know what, being, being a jerk and not, being, uh, not playing friendly in tournaments will usually result in you losing points because you will lose a sportsmanship. Yeah. And you know, that, 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 is, that is fair. That's right. To lose the sportsmanship for, for enforcing that. And if you were doing that over three, four games... It yeah, really piles up. It, it piles up. Yeah. All right, okay. Um, so I've got two shots hitting on fives with my okay. artillery at you guys on the hill. Fives, one, one hit. hit. Okay, it does D3 plus one. You know what, I'm going to use a different <coughs> dice because I realize these ones don't show up well on camera. So one. we're going to do two. Two wounds. two wounds. Piercing two or piercing three? Oh, it might be three on that. It's piercing gotta... three. So twos. They are defense five, but that goes down to two twos. Wounds. Two wounds on this unit. Very nice. All right. So again, we've got another. Here we go. 
Okay, okay. All right, so that's uh, basically all my shooting. So I'm gonna start morale checks. I'm Where do you want to start? This side? side that okay, side so there. they are, and I'll tell him what they are. This is normally what the etiquette is. These guys are 9-11. Okay, so nine you need 11. a 7 nine. I rolled a six. So we are okay. Six, Our fox seven, is eight. okay. So now what I'll do is I'll put that down. Because then we've done it. Okay, those guys. These guys are dash 17. You can't do anything to them. Okay, and because they're dash, it means that they are fearless. Fearless. Which means you cannot waver them, so there's no point even rolling. You can only break them, and no dice, two dice will add up to uh, 15 in this situation. Okay, move our way down the line. The wolves. The wolves. This is, this is a important. whole different story here. They are 13, 15, so you need a, sa a six, sorry, a five to waver mm -hmm. and a seven to break once an eight, eight will remove them from the table i have no inspiring these guys are out of range so the the breath attacks really came to play there this is why it's very important to have inspiring around because if he had had inspiring i would have been forced to roll twice and i would have got him anyway but you know there's there's always that chance there's always that chance and that is the end of my turn one great turn so, one all right turn one, my turn one flipping over to you now to your turn two turn now, two at the end of that turn that burned because memory so we just run into the situation here where he passed the turn over to me but because he declared his intent my intent was to burn this i have no problem that's all absolutely absolutely Play friendly. Play friendly, right? Okay. All right, so. Well, I am going to have these fellas do a sidestep here. And I don't even need to go that much. Just enough so then still I'm getting the benefit of cover there mm -hmm. still. Yep. And these little foxes are going to tread all the way over here. And again, the reason being is now I'll get cover and stealthy, and now I'll still get cover here. But now here's where I'm going to use my surge shenanigans, I think. I think. So these fellas, they have a charge range of 10. You are in charge range. Mm -hmm. Okay. I am going to go. Where's my five? Where's my five stick? This is where I should have had this ready for these boys, because they go five. Where is my five? Oh, is that the one I'm missing? Nope. Yeah, yeah, it is the one I'm missing. I'm missing the five stick, so. Hmm. I will go. Okay. Five. I will go. Five. And I will pivot there. Okay. And that is a 10. You know you cannot burn the center. Okay, you cannot burn the center. What I dropped a stick here somewhere, I think. Okay, we're going to come back to that. So these boys, you're out of charge range. I'll go here. The husk girls will go here. All right. I could charge that. Or Okay, I'm gonna go, these guys have a movement of five. Are you within, you are in range, 17, but I have to do something very clever here. And this guy, is he in range? No. No. Just out. So what I'm gonna do is I really wanna lock this thing down. I'm gonna charge, so I'm gonna be a hindered charge because mm -hmm. I do not have Strider. Mm -hmm. I am within 12. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to charge to lock that healing uh, Phoenix down. Mm -hmm. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to walk up to the fence here mm -hmm. and throw some chuckas at you. Yep. And then this fella, and he will turn that way. Okay. Giant. And. We want our bolt thrower hitting those bet fellas at the back. Yep. Stay, stay, stay. Oh, and what are we going to do with Lady? Lady will go here. Take these here. All right. So now we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to stay. Like I said, remember, this was my deny flank. I want him to come and get it. I want him to spend the effort. 
All right, so we're gonna do, we're gonna start off with shooting. We got 10 shots here and 10 shots here. So 20 shots are gonna go on that unit. And I'm just gonna do all 20 at the same time because they're all hitting on the same. Yep, they and you're saving time. Saving time. So I got 20 dice here, remember 10 green, 10 white. I'm hitting on fours. So I will take out the ones, twos, and threes. All my hits can be confirmed by, by my opponent. That's the yep. etiquette. Yeah, always take the misses away unless you've only got a couple. Yeah, unless it's you need sixes to hit. and So all those are my hits. Mm -hmm. uh, I get pierce one on this. So, so your guys... Pierce three then. Threes. Let's take out that. Hmm. Oh, not uh, so I, good. I, I won't say that I am uh, unhappy with that. <laughs> After four wounds? Four wounds. Takes them up to five. And that frozen token can frozen stay again. on them. All right. Oh, how annoying. All right. So if that's the case. So here's a question for you, Bard. Mm -hmm. I've got two choices here. Mm -hmm. However, I locked. She's got height three. Mm -hmm. She turns, so I could see them. But I could I see them? Okay, no. so they're not on the hill? They're not on the hill. And this is height three. Height three. She's she, not on the she's hill. She's not on the hill because the leader point is not on the hill. So I made a mistake there. And all I'd have to do when I moved is if I moved and put her here on the hill a little bit, she would be able to have a choice of surging them or surging them. As yep. it stands, the only one I can see right now is this unit. Okay, and you're going to need a five. I need, is that a four? That's a four. Oh so boy, so I need five. five successes here. Well, let's do it, let's try it. All right, I've got an eight surge here. I get to re-roll one because they are frostbound and I get a re-roll on a frostbound. Mm -hmm. I need four, I need five successes out of eight with a re-roll. All right, here we go. Oh, and yeah, no. I've got two. It doesn't even matter. And I, and I, this is now, this is interesting. The re-roll frostbound. Mm -hmm. Do I want to re-roll? Is it have to or choice off? Uh, I think better, it's better choice. Yeah, let's check that. That's a good language thing to check, right? Yeah. Frostbound. Master of, when targeting friendly core frostbound units or enemy units that have the frozen special rule, this unit can, can. re-roll, which means not, I have choice. Must. So that's yep. a decision I have to make. I do have to go the two inches I surged, yep. only two out of eight, which is not great. So if I go one more, if I go one more, does that expose my flank there? It, you know what, it might. Let me get a, a smaller one. And you know what, we'll just see. Right now, I'm okay. If we take that laser, this is where your laser really comes in. So if I take that optional rule, it would put me in the flank. Yep. So I am not going to take that optional rule, and I'm just going to leave it just like that. Okay. All right. He has shooting. Mm -hmm. So with a surge, you have to do the full movement that you surge roll. So when you're playing undead, um, you might want to go for a long bomb with like multiple surges because you can surge a target more than once with multiple casters. Um, but you may end up not making contact and you may also surge yourself out of inspiring range. Yeah, be very wary. Surge is, surge is very an acquired taste and, and it really, it really does take some skill um, and, and a bit of luck too. All right, so now I've got uh, 12 shots with the regiment of pack hunters. Mm -hmm. um, they have steady aim. Um, I'm going to be shooting at, I think, you know what? I'm going to shoot at your dragon. Okay. So I need fours. Okay. Not bad. They have pierce one. Okay. So I'm needing fours to wound you. Your defense is five. Yep. Okay. Three, three wounds. wounds. Okay. Three wounds. Okay. Okay. And then my bolt thrower. 17, 19. My bolt thrower will also. I'm going to be shooting those boys at the back with the bolt thrower. Okay. So I need fours. Yeah. It might be tempting to go for the dragon. It really was tempting but there. If, if by going for the dragon, it's not going for the unit. The unit may have an objective. That's right. So two hits, and that was big, right? Yep. So D three each of these. 
So uh, basically, I only get three. three. Mm -hmm. uh, here we go. I need uh, twos to wound these Definitely boys. Three, so, yep. Only two wounds. Two wounds. They are 11, 14. Okay. They will have an ice token on them, though. Okie dokie. All right. And mm. that is it for my magic. So let's do uh, tests from the shooting. Uh, basically, the I have to test them. Yep. Okay. So they've got quite a few wounds on them. What do I need, yep. Bard? Okay, so they're currently on five wounds. They are uh, 13, 15, so you need 10 to break them. 10 or an eight to waver. Nothing. Nothing. Oh, right. boy, oh, boy. Uh, let's go the far unit way at the end. That's the last one, right? Um, and then the dragon. Yeah, yeah, this one here. That one there. 11, 11 15. Oh. Uh, nine. That's 10, at 11. least wavered. They are wavered. Nice. So they're not going towards that. Nope. When you're wavered, you can only stay where you are, reform, or move back. So, Dragon, basically, I need a double six here. So, Ice Token means my speed is reduced by one. Yes. That's that's something specific to the Northern Alliance Army. They, some of their shooting, a lot of their shooting has his ability to put a frozen special rule on a unit. And I need a double six here. Didn't do it on the Dragon. All right, so that's it for shooting. Combat, we have one combat going on over there. Okay. They are hindered. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so they get 10 attacks. Because they charge over an obstacle. They so charge. hindered means you lose <clears throat> one attack and you lose one thunderous charge if you had it. Yeah, but they, they don't have thunderous, but still. All right, so 10 attacks. Needing Normally they need uh, to hit. Normally these ice naiads need a hit on fours. Sorry, not naiads. They are ice kin hunters. They hit on threes normally. So now they're hitting on fours, but they do yep. have elite. Okay. So we're going to take the ones out because of that elite allows me to re-roll. Take out the ones, twos, and threes. That's a pretty good hit rate right there, Bard. Okay. And then I re-roll these. Defensive three. That's All right. Good. So defense three now. I do not have any yep. um, crushing or anything like that. So I need threes. Four, Four wounds. wounds. Okay. And the unit is 16, 18. 16, so 18? A, a double six could waver him. Okay. How about a double one? Double one does nothing. Does nothing. The goggles do nothing. <laughs> all right, okay. so we've done all that. That is the end of my turn okay. two. Okay, so I'm going to put a disordered token on this unit because it's a caster. <clears throat> right. Well. All right, so my turn, my turn two. All right, so my choice is here. Okay, what's the actual width of those units? Mm, good question. That is... A like officially 50. 50. Uh, it looks like, uh, sorry, not five inches. Five, so inches. five inches. I need to check something officially. Uh, so I'm just checking the size because I may have a double charge in here depending on whether I fit or not. All right. Yeah, they, uh, they are large, what are they called? Um, large my, infantry. My, um, yeah, large infantry. Okay, so you are a large infantry horde? Large so, infantry horde. Okay, so you are. 128, 120 millimeters wide. I am using, I have a cavalry regiment, which is 125 millimeters wide. Right. So I cannot fit this unit and this unit into the same unit. Right. Okay, so I have another alternative. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to charge these two units into this unit. Yes. Okay. First? First, first. Okay. Okay, so this is gonna be over here, like that. Yeah. Uh, probably about there. And then this unit over here, like that. Bingo. So my two units charging. And the reason I did that is because I didn't want this unit here pushing this unit far enough over here that right. I wouldn't be able to get this because this also is wider than that unit. This unit is charging. Now, is that unit hindered? It is. Uh, it will be hindered because it's on the, the thing. So I'm hitting and then I'm just going to go like that. And then you line up after. They've made it, yes. they've really cleared it up in terms of how you line up and everything in this edition. So I'm putting a hindered marker on Perfect. this Perfect. Okay. This unit here cannot see anybody but Hrim but it is going to come up uh, and they can't see over nope. right now. Not yet. Okay. Um, Probably could see them. 
Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to come back to here. Actually, what I'll do is I'm going to move my uh, support cab character up. Okay. So he is going to, I'm going to need some inspiring over here. So he's going to come over to there. He was within six inches. Uh, maybe not. So he's not going to be inspiring. Okay. I'll leave that on them from there. Okay. All right. So I have a lot of movement. A lot of movement. A lot of movement. This unit is going to charge that. Yes, unit the pack hunters. These guys have Sir Jesse's boots of striding. So they're popping it. Popping it. And they're going to come over here and smack this unit in the side. So we know and he's declared he's doing a one use pop on this item. That's the Sir Jesse boots. It's a one item that gives him Pathfinder and Strider uh, in one turn. Okay. All oh, right. so that's a good. So basically when you do a multi charge, Sam, that's more than one unit. They have to be able to fit and on the facing on the charge. facing. Because of the size of this unit, he would not be able to fit and line up these two units on that one, if that makes sense. <clears throat> okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm going to check, because he, he, the way it, line, it would line up here and everything as well, he would not be, you have to be able to line up, you have to be able to fit, basically. And okay. you're supposed to share the frontage as much as possible if you can. And because the way this is pivoted and turned, and that's why he measured with that, he wanted it to be smaller so he could just clip the edge here. So if this had been a little smaller, he could line up fully here. And as long as this unit could clip the edge, he'd be fine. But he can't, because this unit is actually wider than, than that one. There. So, <clears throat> all right, so Hrim is not gonna be able Great to Great question, that Sam. You're, you're coming out with the good ones, buddy. Those are good. Okay. <clears throat> so Hrim's out of the arc of that unit there which is he is fine by me okay so um this unit cannot see these guys because the leader point is not on the hill right even though a portion of this is on the hill the unit has to be at least half on the hill to be counted as on the center hill. point is not he can't see it nope yep. you're right yep, yep. see them though so <laughs> uh, see who these guys I, I can see my own guys they can see them oh yeah yeah yes, yes right they can um <clears throat> But chances are those elementals may not be there. Okay, what's uh, Harim's speed? So Harim's speed, that's a great question. The big, the big frost giant. I'm thinking it's frost giant. Speed seven plus a wild charge. Does he have wild charge? He does not have a wild charge. So speed seven. So charge range of 14. Okay, so he is moving just back and outside of 14. Smart. Okay, <clears throat> so what I'm hoping is I'm going to crack this unit here and pivot this way to not give those guys a flank. Right. Okay, these guys here can't really do anything but reform. And uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to reform because if I reform, I'm more than half in the terrain. Smart. So that's that. Okay, so here's my question here. Um, I've already charged this unit in here. Yep. So I cannot declare this later as to charging in that. Right. You have to declare them all at the same time. So I have to decide what I'm going to do with this one. So um, what I really am going to do is... I'm going to clarify something there, if mm -hmm. you don't mind, Bart. Do you want to pause your clock? Yeah, yeah. So what he meant by that, Sam, anybody else? This combat itself, not any other combat, but because he declared a charge here, then went on and did some other stuff, he cannot add to this combat after any combat that's done with one unit so if he wanted to multi-charge that unit he needed to declare all participants at the same time he needed to say my dragon's going to be coming in to support these guys they're both going to be charging the pack hunters you cannot go back after the fact and say oh i meant to put these guys in or support that attack uh and that's even cool. sporting that's still that's not part of the game that's one of those moments that you've got to admit i messed that up uh i missed it and bard because he's a sporting guy just says okay i'm going to go and pick something else okay. because you cannot add to a combat okay and just so you know <clears throat> after i'm out of your arc again and i'm out of his range ah. okay uh, and yep 
This unit Doesn't here matter. is going to counter charge. Now, with regeneration, you have to do it. You don't, you, it's not a must, uh, not a can, you must do it. Yep. So if you have a unit with regeneration that also has a crystal pendant of retribution, you cannot game the system by not regenerating so you die, so you blow up. So I have four wounds on it. The Phoenix has regen four up. Always, always have to regen. Okay, and I get one, two, three back. Three back. Now, holy, nice. Do you know that, Phoenix? Regen has been money. It's two games in a row now. Okay. Really good. So I'm taking disorder because I'm not going to do that. Okay, so I've done that. Um, okay, so have I done all movement? No, I have not. See, because I haven't done this check, I might have missed what I need to do over here. Okay, um, so she's now within 20. She's gonna, she gonna charge? She could, she could charge this unit there. And you know what? If she does, those wolves are in trouble. They are. I'm, I'm, I'm only hitting on fours, but I get elite. Why are you only hitting on fours, Bart? Because I'm on three normally, Yeah. but I'm going to be hindered from right. going into the terrain. So she is actually going to charge in. Kill some foxes. Kill some foxes. What did the fox say? Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> so, all right. This unit here is going to stay where it is for the moment, and it's going to start peppering away at that dwarf unit. Okay. This fella here, because this is, does not have inspiring right now, I'm going to try and get, and there's not really any threat to this unit. I'm moving this caster over to there. Okay, right. So he's now within six, so he'll be giving inspiring. Okay, so I've moved that, I've moved that. I've moved those guys, I've moved them, I've moved them, I've moved them. This has not moved, but it's not going to. All right, so let's go to the magic phase. All right, so what do I have to do here? So I can put Bane Chant. What's more important for me to break? More important for me to break that. So he is going to Bane Chant this unit. He has Bane Chant 3. Sam has a great question. Another one. He's, he's, he's winning. Sam's winning on the questions today. Uh, Sam, that's a great question. That's why bringing, having multi-bases, extra proxy bases is a great idea. Because if you actually declare a multi-charge and you're not able to fit in, then you still complete the, char the, the, the charge with the units that you've declared with or sorry, the, one of the units you decide, okay, well, this one's gonna go in. Mm -hmm. That other unit, uh, basically you'll defer to it, it'll be able to do something else later, but it cannot participate in the charge. Okay. So you don't lose the movement, you don't lose yeah, you're, anything you're with it. You're not getting penalized. You're not getting penalized. You okay. just, oh, it, can, it can't fit. Okay. But don't move it, like. Two successes, so I get Bane Chant in on this unit here which is the unit which is going to be carrying the weight of this combat. Right. Okay. Uh, he, he actually did bring up a good point. If he has, if he moves both units to move to go in mm -hmm. and realizes that they both can't fit, mm -hmm. that one's going to have to go back for a second, line yeah. up the other one, then you, well, you will the lose. Is, You're going to have to move it. The thing is you move the first unit yeah. and line it up where it has to go. Yeah. Then it becomes obvious that you're not going to fit. That's right. That's right. If, okay. yeah, yeah. That's a good point. Okay, so I've done that casting there. Okay. Um, this one here. Heal? Uh, he's got Bane Chant as well. Oh. But only Bane Chant 2. Okay, the priest has Bane Chant 2. And, and who's he going to Bane Chant? He's going to cast it on this unit here. Alrighty. Does yeah, not succeed. Didn't, didn't get it. So you only need it for a spell casting success, you need a 4 up. Okay, so hindered. No, so boom, boom, boom. Okay, so I've done that. Any more casting? Can't cast. Any more shooting? Uh, it has not shot yet, so going to pepper at the dwarves. Nice. Okay, so ten shots. Ten shots. Hitting on sixes because you have cover. And you didn't move, so... Yep. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten shots. Hitting on sixes. Whoops. And re-roll that one. And I hit twice. Twice, and then they're only defense four with these guys, because they have the frost hammers. Defense four. Let's give me some wounds. One wound. One wound. Okay. And let's move over to my, this unit here. Uh, your Lord on Frostfang is higher than the guys in front of him, right? He is. He's got like height four. I can see him. Yep. And, but question is, um, are you in my arc? Easy. Yes. Easy, easy, easy. Easy, easy. Those are excellent. All right, so two shots. Needing fives. Nope. Both miss. Phew. Okay, yes, that would have been good to take him out. Okay. Um, all right, so uh, shooting. He can shoot. 
He has a 12 inch breath attack. Does he? I think. I'm He's just out of range. Just out, just out of range. <laughs> okay, so that kind that kind of blows, but that happens. All right, so uh, morale checks for the end of the combat phase, uh, end of the shooting phase. So that unit there, give me something. Need to really know. Eight. They're like 15, 17. So nothing. All right. 14, 16. So I'll remember okay. that. So this is where in this uh, mission, um, if I had happened to break that unit and then take those guys out, then he's going to have nothing left that can burn that token. That's right. So in this particular mission, being able to reject threat on a token is very important because you may steal it out from under their nose. So this, this character cannot take the token or burn the token, but she can absolutely prevent me from getting the token. Yeah, by killing stuff yeah. that's there. All right, so um, that was that, and that was all of that. Hand-to-hand -hand combat. Let's start with Crimson. Okay, so Crimson has five attacks. Yep. She hits on threes normally, yep. but it's going to be fours. Fours. But she has elite melee. Nice. So fours re-rolling oh. ones. Any ones? Yep, of course. One. One. One hit locked out there, and well, I'll roll it back in the tray. No, nope, nope. one hit. Only oh. one hit. Now Crimson, you need what are you doing? two to wound, and a one. A one. So, so nothing, nothing. No test. Crimson, Woo! what are you doing to me? Okay. All right. So let's move our way. It's always good to move. Okay. So unlike the um, the hand to hand combat, sorry, the shooting phase, the hand to hand combat phase, each morale check is done after each combat. So what you do is you want to go after what has inspiring first, if you can. And none of my units that I'm engaging have inspiring. That doesn't matter, then I'm working my way one side to the other. This unit here. So that's, my yeah, ogres. Always get rid of inspiring if you can first. Ogres have 18 attacks. So that's Unless 12. you're a Night Stalker player. One, two, if you're a Night Stalker three, player, four, talk to me later. Talk five, to me. Six. So this should be 18 it, uh, it never loses the stealthy, but it doesn't. stealthy doesn't apply, Sam, in hand-to-hand. Hand. Hand hand. Stealthy is only against shooting attacks, and that's it. Uh, shooting or some magic spells. Um, fireball, for example, but doesn't affect lightning. All right, so um, my ogres, they would normally hit on threes. They're going to be hitting on fours. Fours. Okay, our ogre palace guard. Okay, here we go. On fours. Let's get rid of twos and threes. Still, uh, that's a good roll, Bart. Holy smokes, that's look at that. Still pretty good. Way above. Yeah. All right, crush two as well, right? Crush two and brutal. Crush uh, two and brutal, yeah. ouch. So you need threes to wound, because I'm wound. defense five. And this is where it kind of balanced out. Not bad, though. One, two, three, seven wounds. Seven out of 18 attacks. I think you would have taken that on nine. Okay. And okay. now I'll do the morale check straight away. Okay, so with Brutal, he's got seven wounds. He's going to add one for the Brutal. So he needs, that's an eight. These guys are uh, dash 17, so you so need a nine. nine. A nine. And I get a five, so I don't break them. Whew. That's going to be a scrap. I may have to do some healing there. If I have heal, I don't think I, I didn't put heal in this okay. list. Over here, the skirmishes, Valerian skirmishes. They hit on threes. Nice. And they have 14 attacks. Nice. Any thunderous? Nope. Okay. Uh, well, they they um, they do actually, but uh, yeah, you didn't hit me hand to hand, did you? Didn't nope. make it. Okay, so they're thunderous charge one. Belayan skirmishes, hitting on threes. Thunderous charge one. So threes and then wounding on fours. Oh. Okay. And then wounding on fours here. All right, four, so wounds. four wounds to start, puts him up to six. Okay, um, okay, this is... Uh, Here comes the big boys. 18, uh, I think I need another seven dice. Ogre Palace Guard, 18, the Paladin Monster Slayers, 25, so I need seven more dice. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there we go. Now, Bart, before you roll this, mm -hmm. remind me, do these guys have Slayer? They do. Again? They have, they have, Paladin Monster Slayers have, sorry, no, they don't have Slayer. They have Vicious versus Monsters and Titans only. Ah, uh, okay. So it doesn't matter for this okay. one. Okay. 25 attacks, hitting on threes. Okay. I got a, a reroll there. Yep, that's a leaner. 
all dice have to be laid flat because uh, that's just the rule. That's just a simple house yeah. rule that we play. Yeah, just there's one it. two in there. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so those hit so far, and that extra. There it is. Hit. Nice. Okay. And what are they wound on? And they have crushing strength one and bane chant. Uh, did you, did you get the bane chant off? Yeah. Oh, you did with them. Yeah. That's the one that didn't, right? Yeah. yeah. That's right. So, ooh, so you need threes. Oof. Not bad. So th two, four, six, eight, nine. Nine puts them up to plus six is 15. They are dash 17. So double ones twice because of my inspiring. Okay. That's, whoa, that's once. Roll it again. Oh. And you're good with the four, four. for sure. Yep. So gone. So these guys gone, which allows you to reform as you planned. Now, don't, this is the part where you don't want to mess up as well, fellas. He's got to decide where he reforms with those two units yep. right now. You cannot go back after the fact and reform. This unit is going to D4, D6. D6? One inch. One inch. I want it a little further, but I'll take one. Where's my... So your options when reforming are D6 forward, D3 sideways if you can, D3 back or a reform uh, from the center. So you can pivot and all that, which he'll probably do here. Okay, this unit is going to pivot. So he'll pivot, see on his center, he just pivots and that's a legal pivot, he's good to go. And then he's protecting himself from flank attacks and in fact, I can't even see him now. That's right, because I pivoted. He pivoted off, off the, the hill. hill. Well, we know who can see you. Grim, Grim, <laughs> Grim the giant can see me still, okay. So, I've done that. Now, working my way across, over here. Okay, Order of the Abyssal Hunt. They have uh, 16 attacks. So it's gonna be in the flank, you double. So double it's 36. in the flank. So, uh, 36. Right here. 32, so I need to leave four dice back. There we go, that's all the dice I need to use. Okay, they hit on threes. Hit on threes, Slayer, melee D3, doesn't matter. And that one. Oh, and that one, almost ripped myself off. And you recall, the reason he hits on threes is because he was on the terrain, but he popped his Jesse's boots. So he doesn't have, he doesn't care about any terrain right now. Okay. For this turn. Here we go. Okay, get rid of, and they do not have elite for melee, but they have vicious. Okay, so ones will count later. So ones and twos are gone. Yeah. There's a fair bit of them, but yeah. I don't, yeah, you, you rolled nice there. So, yeah, I rolled, I think less than average with that number <laughs> out of ones and twos. Uh, but just, you're gonna wound on okay. twos. Crushing strength one, thunderous charge one. Yeah, wounding on twos. You don't need much. Pack hunters are 13, 15. Wounding on twos. Oh, re-rolling ones. You re said you're vicious, ones. right? So vicious. One, two, three, four. So that many so far? Yeah. Oh, well, you helped, but still, it's that's two, four, six, eight, ten. 12, 14, 16. 16, so this unit is actually devastated. What that means is, if they even survive, which we'll roll now to see, that would have an effect in the game. Seven. And I do have inspiring there. Oh, I just knocked him. Five. Five, so they're gone. They're if they stayed, they would lose half their unit strength, half their attacks. Okay, I'm going to reform. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to reform. Yeah. Just to have your face there. And reforming, I can come within one inch. Actually, reforming, you can... Reforming, yeah, you can it, go... Wherever. Wherever. Where, wherever it, just, yep. it goes. Okay, so that's that. Okay, my reform has now blocked him because he is nimble. If I had not reformed all the way across to block him, he would have been able to go boom, boom, hit my dragon in the flank. Yep. What I've done there by reforming is I've boxed him in. Yep. Okay, over here. Now, the Phoenix is not very good at hand-to-hand -hand combat. No, which is why I wanted to lock her okay, down. Okay, uh, has three attacks, hitting on threes. 
two hits. And then... Crushing strength one? Yes, crushing strength one. Okay, so wounding on... What, wounding. One wound. One wound? Yep. Defense is only three. Okay. And morale check. I rolled a six. We're good. So you are still okay. Still okay. Elves, pretty high nerve, but it's only a troop, so their nerve for future reference is only 10, 12. Okay, that was all That's of a, my turn. That was an effect of a really good turn. Now it's your turn three. All right. Okay. Right, Richard, yeah. So I'm going to do something kind of clever here. I, I don't know, kind of, maybe, maybe. Mm -hmm. So what you can do is, is it is it clever? Uh, okay. Uh, I can disengage these guys one, mm -hmm. reform, because a reform you can always do it. No, you can't get closer. So I can disengage and then I can charge them, but I'm gonna be, I'd be at a minus one to hit. Uh, yes, you would. Oh no, uh, they, they, no, they didn't. They, that would be a new unit, so yes. See, what I'm looking at here, fellas, is I can just counter charge this unit. The chances of me breaking this unit are absolutely redonkulous. Actually, that's what I can do. No, they can't, they can't because they uh, have been disordered for they've taken hand-to-hand -hand combat damage. They, they've been disordered so they don't get to shoot. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm looking at. So I can just disengage and then I can sidestep two and a half and then surge them in to them. Yep. I want to get and, rid and of hope, them. And hopefully make it. And hopefully make it because we saw what happened last time, right? So that's my one inch. Okay. <clears throat> if I move them two and a half, so you get to f a three disengage uh, withdraw move. Yep. Uh, which is one inch before you give a unit an order. Okay. And now I'm going to sidestep. Yep. Looks like if I yeah. can make it, I'll if be in. If you make in. it, you'll make it. Yeah. I think okay. It's, I think it's just a two by the looks of it. And then I will move her here mm -hmm. so she can order that. Uh, maybe not quite there. I don't want to be. <laughs> All right, so what we're going to do here, and this is where, again, look, no. No, nope, she's out of, yeah, out of line of sight. Out of line of sight. <clears throat> so I'm going to counter here. Mm -hmm. These dwarves were going to... We're going to reform. Reform, so that maybe next turn if I'm still around. And their charge is 12? 12, yep. So I'm out. That is my intent, so I check that. So can you double check that for yep, me, Bart, yep, if we're yep, in yep. tournament? Because again, it's on my clock. I can always get him to... Yep. So good, so we're out. I don't want you charging my flank there. All right, so what am I gonna do with these Huskarls here? Hmm. Right now they can see nothing. They can see nothing. <clears throat> and they, they're gonna take it for the team, I think, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna go five and then turn, still in the flank. I need to make way because what I wanna do here is I wanna double charge. Mm -hmm. I want to double charge with Harim and these guys here. Oh, you're in trouble there. Am I in trouble? Yeah, because leaders points, this unit's going to be on this side, that one's going to be on that side. If you charge this one first, or you can't charge this one first because you can't fit. Can't fit. This one will charge first and line up to where it's going to end at the end, yep. and you're not going to be able to like pivot through. So and the come only up. way that I could do that, because I haven't moved anything else, is literally, I'm going to take it from them, March. And how's that? All the way up to there. <clears throat> That's it. That gives you the room. That gives me the room, because to me, getting rid of this horde is more important than that regiment. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. So, so notice, fellas, these guys hadn't been moved. Yep. This was the last unit activated. Can I can go back to it because I hadn't done anything else yet. Mm -hmm. So that allows me to, all I did was pivot them back and move them further because they hadn't marched. Now they've considered marched, no pivoting there. So now we're gonna do the double charge. So there's your question. There's your question here, Sam. I am, what I would do first. Probably not. We'll put that back for a second. Do you just, think I'll just do him? Just in case. Yeah. So if he had then gone there and placed him in that spot and then found that he cannot fit through this little gap here, yeah. he would have jammed himself out. Right now, there's a gap. So you do this one first. Probably best to move him. Second. Yes. So I, because I can choose so the order, right? Good, good call there. Uh, 
he only gets one pivot. Yeah, so he just come up to the point where he's about there, and then oh, I see, and then pivot through, and then because then you, you and then can, once you make contact, you lift, you pull back to pull back. wherever you are. Okay, I'm gonna put him on the hill because he's harims. Oh, I don't want him I've to. Got sm you got a base? I of course I do. There you there go. There we go, and we'll get the uh, we'll get the. This is also why those little bases are great because. I'm not going to run into the situation where Harims falls and smashes Bard's beautiful models here, painted by Mr. Drew Allen. Yep, there we and go. And then these guys will swing in. Yep, that looks about right. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, this is me trying to pull it back here too, fellas. Well, clever play by Mr. Mr. Forbes here, Mr. Bard. I don't have a choice. What he said is true. He locked me Couldn't, out. Richard, he could not see my unit. Yeah, I couldn't this, see. He couldn't see because his height two, the, the hill's height three. These guys are height two. It's blocking line of sight. The best he could do is march over the hill. That's it. All right. So what we're going to do here is we don't have a choice. We're going to charge these mm -hmm. big guys in the center. Mm -hmm. Bam. We're going to counter charge right there. there. Yep. Bolt thrower is simply going to keep knocking on those mm -hmm. guys. They have terrain now. And there it is. Okay. So let's do shooting. This uh, shooting, I'm actually going to do it in a different order because I don't want to forget this. And it also, it's key. I really need this to work. Mm -hmm. All right. So I have an eight surge with my lady. Mm -hmm. I need fours. Last time she and only got two. I need probably two successes two will here. Make it. One won't. Yep, you make it. And we're in. <clears throat> okay. So hit and then line up. Okay. So I just want to point out something about surge. Okay, so you calculate what arc you're in by where is your leader point in before you do the surge. Okay, so if he'd been over here and surged, his leader point would have been in my flank, so he would hit my flank. However, if you hit a unit square on, like completely square on, you end up on the facing that you make contact with. So that's one that's one little trick that surging armies like undead and can use. Okay. And the nice thing about that little surge, guess what I gained? Because I was more than half of the unit was on the hill. I gained Thunder's charge from surging off the hill. Yep. Which is nice because I, I kind of need it, I think. Although, unless those guys are defense uh, three. They're defense three. Oh, so. Oh, defense four, actually. I so it will, it will matter I then. I think it will matter. Beauty. Uh, to do, 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 do skirmishes, defense four. So it will matter now. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to take two shots at those guys in the, they're hiding there in the mm -hmm. swamp. Mm -hmm. Okay, so two. they have cover now. They have cover. So now I go from fours, hitting on fours, to hitting on fives. One, One hit. hit. D3. Mm -hmm. or three. Yep. Wounding on twos. twos. Three wounds. Three wounds. Takes them up to five. Takes them up to five, and mm. they're frozen again. Four, five, yep. Okay. Taking that token there. Any other shooting? I did the surge. No other shooting. We're going to go... Uh, Hirim's charged in, so he can't do anything, so we're going to do the test. So we'll test on that unit that's in the swamp there. Okay. Not enough. Not enough. Okay. So, yeah, okay. Uh, <clears throat> so they're not wavered anymore, but they're slower. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do combat. Is there any combat that's more important than others? Mm. Uh, no, but no. so we'll go left to right. It doesn't really okay. matter here. Let's start with the foxes. There are little uh, foxes here. Uh, they get 10 attacks, so I'll take all my green dice. All right, they're going to hit you. Uh, foxes are absolutely terrible. They're going to hit you on fives. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm only going to take out the hits. Yep. Two hits. Okay. Because I'm hitting at such a high number. And my defense is four. So fours, but I do have vicious. So fours re-rolling ones. Two wounds. Two wounds. Okay. okay. What's her nerve, sir? 12, 14. So a 10 will, uh, a 10 will waver her. No. No. So two wounds. Okay. All right. Does she have iron resolve? She has iron resolve. So, so. she gets a wound back because yeah. of that ability. Oh, God, you know what? I think also my, <laughs> my phoenix had iron resolve. Did it? I'm just double checking. Phoenix. 
Uh, no, no irons off. Okay, good, 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 good. Yeah, I still, still get. I need to put some little la labels in the back of my unit. What special rules each has? Yeah, maybe, so, maybe little cards yeah. or something. Mm. Eighteen attacks here, so I've got ten, <clears throat> and I'll just simply take out two of these white dice, and uh, eighteen <clears throat> attacks. Oh, not a red. All right, so this is with here hitting on fours, wounding on twos. Mm -hmm. Fours, I'll take out all the ones, twos, and threes. I need that cavalry to go away. I think there's a good, there's a good chance, yeah. Okay. And wounding on twos. Twos now. Crush one, thunderous one. It's uh, currently on five. One, two, three. One, two, so seven, wounds. seven more. Takes them up to 12. Okay. 12 for land skirmishes, 13, 15. And uh, one more. One more, re-roll. Yep. yep. Oh, Done. yes. All right, so now I have a really tough decision here. I am out of his arc, for sure. So that will make me pivot on the spot. I stay out of his arc and look him right in the flank there. Because if they don't go this turn, I may have put myself in a nice position to hit him in the flank later. All right, now we'll go to this one. Maybe I should have done that one first because then I could have decided which way I wanted to pivot. All right, so we've got the Naiads, 25 attacks. So, all right, 25 attacks. Naiads always hit on fours. Well, unless they're hindered. So fours, I'm gonna take all those ones, twos, and threes out. Now, did my hammer of measured force actually help me there, Bard? Nope, because my defense is four. So it's just gonna be fours anyways. Fours. Yep. And let that be a note to all you folks out there. If you put a hammer of measured force on something, don't bane chant them, it doesn't help. Because you're just gonna always wound on fours. Uh, okay, so. Fours. Fours. Oh, that is not three. Three. Only three wounds Only out three of all that. All okay. right. Okay. Harim. What does Harim have? Okay. That's yeah. I'm glad I I am gonna need those boys over there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Harim. He is D six plus ten. Mm -hmm. Five. So fifteen attacks. Okay. Okay. I'll use those red dice plus three white. All right. Hitting, uh, Hrim hits on fours. Uh, Hrim, like other giants, doesn't get to add a rampage or anything like that, I don't believe. Slayer D6, so I don't even get that. All right, so twos to wound, because he's got crushing four. Okay. So we're at seven, seven wounds. So it takes him up to 10. Okay. And unlike other giants, Prim does not get brutal. 22, 24, so you needed uh, actually 23, 25 because of the uh, rally for yep. him. So you need double six to waver. Double six. Let's go to double six here. Oh, double five. Tried. <laughs> Tried. All right, so that's done. Over here, we have nine attacks with the blade of slashing. Okay, which means I get to re-roll one. And it, it doesn't have to be a one, it can be any number. Yep. Hitting you on threes. Okay, uh, I'll re-roll one Ooh. of those. Yep. Okay, all hits. Uh, wounding five, normally. So I have crushed two thunderous one, so I'm gonna get it all, so twos. Yep, this is why lords on frost fangs are popular. Two, four, six, seven. They did get a nerf. They used to be crushed three basic. Now they're th crushed two, <laughs> thunderous one. Now they're not two up on everything in the game. <laughs> two, four, six, seven. Seven <laughs> wounds. Okay, uh, these guys, order of Bissell Hunt, 15, 17. 15, 17. So how many wounds? Seven wounds? Seven. So, so I need, need 10. 10 or an eight to waver. Yep. Nope. Nothing. Uh oh. Seven uh oh. Wounds. Uh oh. Seven uh -oh. 
All right, last but not least, we've got our uh, 10 attacks way down there with our ice kin. Now they're hitting on threes this time. Rerolling ones. Hitting on threes. Uh, I'll take that one out. A couple twos. of twos, though, are no good, but those are hits. Mm -hmm. Here's the one. Yes, and then I need threes to wound. All right. So two, four, six wounds. Six wounds. Okay. That takes him up to seven. All right. No. Seven and four is Slab definitely not, not enough. Not nowhere near enough. Not even enough to waver. Okay. So seven wounds. That was my turn. That was my turn three. Your turn three? Yeah, my turn three. Okay. All right. Um, I've given you lots of nice options. Lo lots of options. Mm. All right, so. Uh, I can come within one inch of you on a charge. Mm-hmm. So, and because you're not within one inch of me, actually you're further than an inch away, I think I'm going to pivot this unit and, and charge Harim in the flank. Oh. Okay. And Wouldn't you need a second pivot though? No, just the one. All I need to do is make sure clip you? make just sure that you're you're clipping, right? Yeah. As long as I can clip past, which I can. So uh, let's put something down. We'll just double check this, right? Uh, would this be the good arc to put it on? Okay, and right on the corner there. So pivot from the center. Whoops. So it's about there. And I should still be able to clip pass. Yes, I can. Perfect. You okay. can definitely see me. Okay. So th is this? Oh, you and is I'm that? I'm going to double charge. Double charge. Got okay. it. Take out the big guy, and he. Um, or am I? Let me think about this. Um, first, I'm going to do this. I'm going to double. If I don't take the other unit, you know what? No, I'm going to hit him in the flank, and this unit's going to charge that one. Got it. Okay. So it's going to have to move up. So counter charge. Counter charge. Naiads. Un unlikely to break your naiads in one turn. Um, but what I'm doing is with the naiads, I'm charging the rear. Maybe. They're going in as well. Yeah. So that is maybe, a double maybe, charge. Maybe, maybe, maybe. It has to be the angle, right? Just checking the angle. The arc that my guy's in. Yes, I am. I'm in the rear. So oh, well, let's, the rear, let's laser that. Let's laser that. I think you're in the side. Oh, yep, uh, you're in the side. It is. Yep, yep. So you can't. I'm in the side. So I can't because unless this unit is wider than rim, what's actually it's 80 millimeters. 20 millimeters i would have to be able to fit in there i'm on the same size as him but he is there this unit being there yeah has blocked me from Woo! Into they the were flank. they were it was a good move it was a good move it was lucky 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 uh oh so todd they'd still be great question todd so that uh, they would still be devastated uh but they wouldn't be wavered so you would lose half your unit strength you would lose half your attacks uh and minus one to hit and, and a minus one to hit? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's double check that one. The minus one to hit, I'm not sure about that one. Um, well, well, the choice is. Yes. Flank. That's yeah, nice. to me, that seems like the, the best choice. Okay. These guys are going to move in. That little bit further. Just be all in. Get out of charge. Yep. Because you did wounds now. Wounds uh, of seven wounds on me. Regen of four, yeah, four, four plus. Up. Four up. Regens. Um, two. Two. Well, that's all right. It's all right. Two. Uh, it would be better if it was more. Two. Good for you. <laughs> yeah, you're riddling me down. Oh, he, he's doing the same thing he did last game. He's just holding somebody up for an entire game. Okay. Um, okay, it's turn three. Still got plenty of time. Okay. Um, going to shoot at your dwarves, so staying where he is. Okay, now I've got some movement over here that I'm going to need to do some stuff with. So, yeah, I'm going to have to do this, aren't I? Because I'm going to have to try and bane chant with that one. Take that unit out if I can. But you have uh, ensnare, right? So it's still minus ones to hit. Yep. Yeah, I'm not going to break that unit, which is going to be a huge problem. I am too crowded to, uh, to do anything there. The downfall of hordes, which we've run into. We all run into that. Okay, is there anything that I can do here to stop you moving? I can sacrifice him by getting him in the way that make you force you to kill him before going through. Mm -hmm. What is his nerve? 
His nerve is 13, 15. You know what? He could probably he do it. He could possibly do it. Okay, so he's actually going to do that. Now, wouldn't you he's... be in my front, in um, my flank? Uh, I'm not charging you. Oh, ho. So okay. you're just going to be an outside and in? Yeah, actually, uh, and that's not going to give you no. room. To, you're still going to be able to move. Um, so, yeah, I can't really block anything with that guy. So this, this unit is in serious trouble. Okay. Uh, uh, let's go, let's go. Well, better choices. Well. I'd have to force you to burn that. What is it? It's early enough. It's only turn three for me. Uh, potentially three turns to come back. Hard choices here. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to force you to burn that. Okay, I'm going to go six. Okay, wherever you go, I'm going to be able to come after you. Um, but you know what? I'm going to keep going all the way to 12. Six. And let's go all the way as far as they can go. So cool. basically right up to there. Basically. Oh. Okay. So they're marching. They're marching. Okay. Um, I'm the curious... Else, oh, that looks like it looks like you might be in. I'm in. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll be burning that at the end of the turn. Well, no. Well, actually, I, I'll I'll wait. We'll see. Maybe I'll burn it. You can't. Hmm. Well, unless you kill it. Uh, you're you're strength you're three and three. Oh, three and three. Okay. Oh, and you've got the one from the dwarf. And the one. So uh, if you so kill them, we're tied at least. And then the object is still there. So you yeah. May, you may want to hold it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this unit here. If you don't kill him, I may burn it. <laughs> That's right. Okay, this unit here is going to turn all the way around. Yeah. And go, it's time. You're at Isn't that. It? So what Bard's doing right now is you're doing a little bit of a counting assessment, mission assessment. I like to start doing that at least turn three or four and remind myself what, the, charge. what the mission Can't criteria charge. is. Oh, you said that. All right. Okay, so... Uh, Excuse me. Oh, actually, got to move these characters. Bard's in good shape for this mission. He's okay. currently... Okay, well, I'm going to have to to even have a chance. I've got to do as much as I can here. Okay, so uh, he's going to move five over to there. Okay. Uh, he's going to have to come up. So what's my chance? What's the defense? Four. So threes will be twos. You know what? It's going to it's going to come down to it. I really need to kill that unit. Okay, uh, he's going to basically move over to there. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. All right. Bane Chant 3, that unit there. There it is. And... Oh, no. No. Okay. No Bane Chant. Boo. Okay. Um, he's going to cast uh, Martyr's Prayer 7. Oh, that's the heal. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yep. 6, 7. Yep. Fours. Give me some fours. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's five. 5 wounds back. That helps. 5 wounds back. I don't think it's going to matter in the And he takes 5 wounds, correct? 5. Yeah, he takes five wounds. Oh, those guys have Iron Resolve, so they get one back from that. Nice. So that, uh, he, this guy takes five wounds, but he does not take a nerve check from Martyrs. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, she's already over there in combat. Um, mm, 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 mm. Shooting. This one here has nothing to shoot at. I think I'm not going to get a cheeky shot at your character. Nope. nope. Can't see, right? Nope. Okay. I'm not going to get a shot at your thing because my units are in the way to see. So, has nothing to shoot at. All right. Okay, so uh, those guys move, so no casting. Uh, cast, cast, in combat. Uh, in combat, in combat, done. All right, so uh, let's go for hand to hand combat time. Okay. Okay, it's time. It is time for little lady to do her work. All right. All right, Crimson. Don't, Here she is. Don't fail me She's out. not hindered this time. So she hits on threes. Three re hits. Rerolling ones, but no ones. Wounds, twos. Three wounds. Three wounds. Got them up to five. They are nine, 11. That'll do it. Uh, no inspiring over no there. Inspiring. So the foxes are off the table. Okay, she's looking at you guys. Okay, now we have equal unit strength there, right? Yes, sir. You're three and I'm three. That's right. Okay. All right, let's move our way down the down the here. Okay, this unit here, 25 attacks. 
which is 25 attacks normally hitting on threes, but now hitting on fives. Three eights, 24, easy way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one more. So 25 attacks. Perfect. Yeah, unlikely to break this unit, but I've got a chance. Yeah, they're gonna be in trouble next turn. Really bad trouble. <laughs> okay, hitting on fours. Fours. Uh, order the, let's double check their stats. What do they have? Uh, not a small guardians. Okay, um, Yuri. Okay, here we go. Hitting on fours. So we got twos and threes, lots of twos and threes. Like a huge amount of twos and threes. Like way more twos, one, twos and threes than average. We, <laughs> yep. Okay. Oh, okay. One more? Is there? Yep, that one there. Okay. These ones are hard to see. I'm gonna just yeah. throw those dice out from that lot. That okay. the army, but not good for stream. Okay, uh, threes. Threes. Oh, no. So your lack of Bane Chant cost you two wounds there. Yeah. So one, two, two four, three. six. Six. So you could only waver me with a double six. Double six. No. no. Okay. You're in trouble, boys. Okay, uh, next one here. Into the side. Okay, the Oath Sworn Guardians. Rampage, oh, Rampage D3. Rampage. <laughs> These aren't the guys that I want to be hitting here. Okay, so they have 12 attacks, so 24 attacks, so one less dice. Nice. Hitting on? Hitting on threes. Threes, okay. Rerolling re one. Now, oh, that's nice. They got uh, elite. Yep. Any crushing or anything? Uh, crushing strength one. Oh, nice. One. One. There's a lot of ones one. in there, Bard. One. This is where this helps you. Bard rolls a lot of ones. I certainly do. Uh, you had one three. more one there, sir. Did I? Okay. Yes, you did. Okay, so those all hit. Nice. So all these are rerolls. Yeah. And two extra. Okay. Which is I'm good with that. And those, now you're wounding on fours. Wounding on fours. Defense five. Crushing strength one. Defense four. That's okay, not that's bad. not bad. Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. Okay, so Harim is dash twenty. So you Ooh. need a nine twice. Ooh. But you still did eleven wounds on him. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he's got he's got high nerve. Six. Okay, so he's good. 17, so he's fine. Okay, but they did some good numbers. All right, this over here, 20 attacks. 20 attacks. Hitting on threes, and then probably, and wounding on twos. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. 20. Which puts the other four in there. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Hitting on threes, um, no bonus to elite. Yeah, that's a cocked. Get rid of ones and twos. Pretty good. Pretty good. And the reroll. Yep. yep. Hits. And now rushing three. Wounding on twos then. Defense five. Hopefully I'll take this unit out. Two, three, four, four out. So two, four. Six, eight, ten wounds. Ten wounds, okay. So we, we actually still have a chance. Ten wounds. Hush scrolls are 15, 17 with Fury. Okay. Ten plus eight. Eighteen. Reroll it. Because of Harim. Ah! Those high rolls. Those wounded warrior dice are so good, Bard. Yeah. We all have them. All right. Uh, going to D6, D3, uh, D3 left. D3 left? Yeah. Two. Inches. So here's one of those situations, fellas, where you, when you reform and you roll, you make that roll, you have to move it. The, the full distance. The full distance. Yes. If you, you can, unless you bump into something. You can get really caught out uh, if you don't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you roll badly for that. <clears throat> this one? Over there. All right. So this is my Order of the Abyssal Hunt. It has 16 attacks. Yep. So, so they've lost Thunderous because I did some wounds to them. So they're hitting on threes, but wounding on fours. Yep. 
hitting on threes. And I might get extra attacks here as well that I need to work out. Oh, do they get Slayer? Uh, they, um, your, I think large calf, is it? Oh, I gotta, I double check. This one is a reroll. Large calf. Okay, five. Okay, so that hits. Um, so it is, uh, what am I looking at? I'm looking at... Order of the blah, blah, blah. Order of the Abyssal Hunt. I've sworn, I'm still getting used to, there it is. Uh, Slayer melee D3. Slayer so is... So they get it. Slayer, he's large calf. Okay, so another D3 attack. Another D3. So those hit so far, another D3 attacks. Another three. Three more. Hitting on threes. Oh, one extra attack. One. I'm up uh, hey, it's one. Yeah. Okay, uh, you're wounding on fours. Okay, they have wounding on fours, re-rolling ones from Vicious. Nice. Reroll once, and I'll re-roll that four is cocked because it's not particularly down. So now that one does, and that's the vicious rolls. Reroll that one. <laughs> okay. Okay. So two, four, six, eight. Eight wounds? Eight wounds. Okay. All right. Where is it? Uh, lost for, he has 15, 17. So he's got a lot. Eight wounds. Eight wounds. Plus seven is 15? 15, so oh, he's wavered. Is he wavered? What does he have? Yeah, Fury. Thunderstars, very inspiring. He does not have fury. Okay. So that was the perfect thing to roll for him. Okay. All so right. you did how many wounds? Eight wounds? Yeah. Okay. Okay, now over here, three attacks. Hitting on threes for my Phoenix. Phoenix. Okay. Uh, three attacks, hitting on threes. One. One. <laughs> and then wounding on uh, twos. One wound. One wound. Okay, no I am 10, 12, so... No check. Nine. Wavered. Right? So That's nine... Two, two plus nine is 11, 11. they are 10, 12. Wavered. Those, those, your nerve checks have been money. Good, good no. time for that. I'd rather them dead, but yeah. I'll, I'll take the waiver. <laughs> yes, okay, you will. Um, and that's it for my turn three. All right, turn four. Turn All four. All right, I've got a, I have a big, obviously a big now, decision there. Now, the problem there. is... No one can burn that token over here. No. So you have to... <laughs> fight you for it. Fight me for Keep it. Keep fighting you for it. Or, All right. Or, or bring those, uh, the um, Frost guys down to help out. She's 12-14, you said? 12-14. Uh, yeah. I don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. Charge her. Try to take yep. her out. Because yep. otherwise I'm going to get hit by... Boom. I, I am here. I'm going to turn you. Yeah because I have to go the full distance. There we go. All right. Okay. Now. This gives you a hard decision here, right? Yeah, because they can come shoot. And, yeah. So either you're going to give me that objective over there. Yeah. Or you're going to give me the objective or, or you're going to um, maybe lose the objective over here because my ogres are going to smack the crap out of your dwarves over there. So what do, what do you do with this? What do you do? Yeah, uh, well, I know he's going to take him. They should be able to, this should be able to kill that. Um, no, how many wounds on that? Uh, on him? Yeah, three. Three, so... Oof. Like, uh, because I'm within an inch, I have to be further away. Yep. So basically, counter, charge in the side. Yep. It was a tough decision. Boom. Yep, yep. For sure. I have to regen? Yep. So three. <laughs> I forgot about the regen on those guys. God damn it. <laughs> Fives. Oh, yeah, four back. Uh. Hey. All right. Yes, this, this unit, Nyad Ice Hunters or whatever they are, Defense four naiads are pretty sweet. Defense four, regen four, yep. phalanx. No, regen five. Regen five. No phalanx and snare. Snare, sorry, yeah. Would be nice if they had phalanx. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna counter those boys. Yep. So basically, I will turn and then I end up shifting over. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there we go. Yeah. So you put them down. I'll put my guy over. Perfect. There we go. Okay. Right there. All right. Yeah, better than getting a, getting read, right? That's right. <clears throat> so this guy, this guy is hindered. So you know what we're going to do? This is where you really need to think, fellas. So basically, I'm going to move. I get to disengage one. The only option for me mm -hmm. is to move back three and a half. So right there. 
The reason I'm doing that is because when you charge me, I'm going to get hindered. You're going to get hindered. And I also pull you more this way. I want mm -hmm. you coming this way now. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, all right. Shooting. I'm going to again. I'm going to. Sh that'll be Keep there. Yeah, Keep hitting them. Makes sense. But, uh, wavered. Uh, wavered. Nothing I can do there. Just I'm just going to keep them you there. Can, you can pull back. Oh, right. bolt thrower. That's <clears> a bolt thrower as well. Mm -hmm. If I move her, and you have no wounds on them, and they're nervous, uh, like five. Was was the five? Oh yes, because remember he did his special heal. Oh, that's right. I'm I'm looking. They go. Why is he got five? Okay, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move six. I'm still inspiring there, and I'm going to blast that guy. All right, let's um, do it. Any faction of fun to play against? Um, I like playing against any list which is not a defense six skew. Yeah, defense six uh, lists are tough. Um, oh no, there's K just K chaos dwarves. Yeah, uh, abyss dwarves. They're fun. Play. Yeah, there's just you, I haven't found an army I don't enjoy playing against. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing somebody in our group play halflings. That'll be fun. All right, well, so let's. Trevor's playing halflings. Tre yeah, it's Trevor. He's got to build them. He's got to get them going. Yeah, he's playing some games with them. Is he? He's got them. He's got them built. Oh, uh, nice. Not all painted yet. So sweet. Yeah. So yep. they're on their way. Yep. All right, we're going to do bolt thrower. Two shots into Minus, there. Yep. Minus one to hit. Fives. Rerolling ones. I got one. one. So D three. Two. Twos. One, one wound. One wound. All right, it's still chipping away. And they're frozen, frozen again. again. Leaving that counter on them. Lady Bolt Thrower is going to fire there. Okay, minus so, one for individual. Individual. So needing fives. Misses. No. Um, any other magic or shooting or anything? Nope. Nope. That's it. Combat. Uh, well, let's test. Who do we do? We did a wound on them wound over on there. Wound on these guys. So test. Nine. Five. Nope. Five. Five, six, eleven, they are wavered. Okay, wavered is good. Although we could we really want them broken. Yes, you do. Uh combat. Well, let's do combat here on the dwarves. So they're 12 attacks. Mm. They are going to be hindered, so I'm hitting on fives. But they do have crush one, so I'll be wounding on threes. Hitting on fives. Let's spike here. Wounding on threes. This was this was probably too much of a gamble. Yeah, where's this? Here. Okay. Fives. So we're gonna take away the hits because we're hitting on a high number. One, oh, two, Pull three, hits, four hits. Yep. The wounding of four. So wounding on threes because they have the frost hammers. <clears throat> three wounds. Takes up to four. All right. Let's test. Eight to waver. Not enough. Not enough. Needed a break there. Needed a ten. <clears throat> right. You did disorder her. I did disorder, so she is not flying off to kill not your flying in... next turn. Yep. All right, so we're gonna do this one first. <clears throat> um, yeah. So we are. Uh, what is it? Thirty-six attacks. I only have uh, twelve, thirty-two dice, so I'll be re-rolling or rolling six more. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is in the flank. Yep. All right. Take out all those. So you'll be rolling four more, right? Uh, 32 plus four. Yes, four six. more. Okay. Uh, so there's there's four more I'll roll after. These are the misses. Mm -hmm. Okay. That looks about average. Yeah, we need more than average, but we still have the naiads helping out. Oh too. yeah, yeah, for sure. I need I need them gone. All right, so these are all misses. These are all hits. That's pretty damn good. The extra four. Here's the extra four. Yeah. Okay, one, and uh, I wasn't fully on the hill, no, I don't think, so no, we're no. we're going to roll to wound at threes. Yep. Currently on four. Let's get lots of ones and twos. I'm seeing a couple ones and twos. I'm seeing a fair few ones and twos. Not enough to make a difference, I don't think. All right, so four, eight, That's ten wounds ten there. Wounds. Takes them up to 14. Okay. Then we have naiads. So we have uh, basically... So you're telling me there's a chance. Th I'm telling you there's a chance, man. Hmm. So we're going to take out seven dice. This is 32 dice here. Sorry, not 32 dice, 25 dice. Yeah, what every stalker wants to know. Hmm? What every stalker wants to hear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you're telling me there's a chance. And that's yeah. a re-roll, and that's that. a re-roll. Yeah. So we need fours, so we'll take out all these misses. 
And then I have two that were cocked here. And okay, these are good. And then two. Yay. All right, so now these Pretty are. Pretty sure you got the unit. Okay. Fours, two. Wound. We got one, two, three, three four, four, five. five. Only five Takes more. me up to 19. 19, and what are, what are they for their morale? Okay, they are. They are. Palo de Mosley is 23, 25 at the moment because of the uh, rally from him. 23, 25. So I need a four to waver, a six, six to break, break twice. Yep. yep. Once. Once. Yes. Done. Got him. All right. Um, okay. And now, High uh, Chaplain Augustus is like, uh, what do uh, I do? Uh, what do I do now? So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pivot this big, huge Nyad horde in the center. Mm hmm. Boom. Because we're only at turn four, so okay. I will have to move closer here. Yep. Because that's the unit I think I really want to contend there. Yes. And this unit. Hmm. There's a there's a thing all the way at the back, or there's this one. This one, which is closer. If I turn around, I can start shooting at these, but there's nothing over there. So you know what I'm gonna do? I am going to. If I D6 ahead, I can probably slam into them, which does get me a little bit closer. So I'm yep. gonna D6 straight ahead. So six. So they basically will go straight ahead and straight see. Straight ahead, bam. Yeah. Boom. Yep. Okay. All right. Okay. And those are not. Oh, Hrim. Hrim is D6. Here we go. Yes. D6 plus 10. So 16. Ooh. Okay. All right. Come on, Earth Sworn Guardians. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, those are the inspiring ones. Inspiring Fearless, dash 17. Dash 17, wow, okay. <clears throat> Hitting on fours. All right, and wounding on twos. Yep. Twos is the big one here. Let's see a lot of twos. That's good. Okay. So, four, eight. Eight wounds, you need a nine to break them. Nine twice. Twice. Actually, need a ten. Why? Because of my rally. Oh. Uh, nope. We're good. So how many? You did eight wounds, was it? Eight, eight wounds. Eight wounds. Okay, and uh, iron resolve, so seven. Seven. Okay, and that is my turn. Your turn four, sir. My turn. Oh, there's four. no. We don't have to worry about. Don't the have clock. to worry about the clock. All right. Okay. Well, uh, looks like my ogres. They in the front or the. Oh, sorry, the side or the... I'm... My guess would be the side, but worth checking. You want to check for me? Oh, you're in, the, you're in the rear. I'm in the rear. Okay. Rear. What? what? A double charge? Boom. Oh, because he's going to just counter. Yep. She. 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 Sorry, she. she. All right. Um, <laughs> this unit here is going to uh, turn... And move six to there. Okay. Um, yeah, I can. I can. I'm just gonna go and just gonna go and kill this dude. Charge! Charge! Hindered? Yeah, hindered. That might help. But that might help. Maybe. Okay. Okay. Uh, counter charge. And um, you know what? I'm gonna check something out here. Yeah, you're outside of three right now. I'm yes. charging. I'm just gonna charge you. Rim? Uh, no. Damn. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm just to hold him there. Just to hold him there. I'm thinking about that. Uh, my alternative is to fly, start flying down towards here. Um, he's got three wounds on him right now. Mm -hmm. You've got. It's got high defense, uh, for fours, but high nerf. All right, um, charging them. Okay. Just to slow them down. Oops. Boom. Boom. Okay, we know, whoop, we know we're in contact there. Yeah, I put him on the hill. There we go. So, yeah, it's got three wounds on him right now. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, that's not a healthy place for him to be. 
Okay, and it um, looks looks good to me. I was trying to think. <laughs> um, Martyr's Prayer, I think it's 12 inches. I'm just going to double check. Martyr's Prayer. Martyr's Prayer, 12 inches. So if I get over there, shit, for sure I can get him. All right. Um, he is charging after her. Yeah, yeah ab absolutely. Boom, boom. Chargey, chargey. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. So we know those guys are in combat. Okay. Okay. Um, Take away her magic. Yep. Yeah, uh, he's going to move five over this way. So to there. Definitely would be 12, no problem. Take his five wounds with him. Uh, charging. Um, staying where they are. Um, you know what? It's more important that I give these guys some healing than kill those this turn. Because you can, because yeah, I didn't cause, disorder you. Because you were wavered. And I'm going to go uh, fly. Nim over. Nimble flyer, right? Yep. And let's see where I can go over. I still want to be within my arc to see you, but I want to be out of your charge arc, which I believe I am there. Yep. Okay. All right. Going to do that. Um, Not quite in the cover, though, right? Uh, no. How many wounds? Uh, currently on it. Uh, currently five, which okay. I'll have to do my regen. One, two, three, four, five. And I get one back. One back. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Down to four wounds. Okay. Okay, done. Oops. Done, done. Um, something else. Uh, done, 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 done. All my stuff's done. All right, so All right. casting. Uh, Mars is seven on the dragon. Oh, the Martyr's Prayer. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Give me lots of heals. One, two, three, four heals. Four heals. Which heals all the way up. All the way up. And Put takes four more on him. Yep. One, two, three, four on him. So it takes him up to nine. So he, he I just need to breathe on him and he's gone. Yep. But the problem is, is there's nobody left to breathe. Nothing there. Okay. Heal here. Okay. Uh, the... heal, heal five, right? Yeah. Okay, heal five for my Phoenix. One, two, three, four. You never five. have to take a test be because of that, Sam. Martyr's Prayer is one of those spells where you do damage to yourself from successes, but you don't take t take a test for it. But if I hit him with something, like just do one wound, he'll test as normal. So all those wounds could end up hurting him. But at this point of the game, that's a great use for that guy. Yeah, um, I don't think there's anything that inflicts damage upon yourself that requires a nerve test as well. That's right. Okay. All right. So rats have stuff like that. There's Skaven, uh, the rats. Uh, so I got one back. One uh, back? One back there. Okay. Uh, let me just double check that um, the Villain Penners do not have it. No. Okay. So, um, and so he's done his, sorry. Yeah, he's done his casting. That's yep. done their casting. Shooting. Do shoot. I have anything to shoot at? I don't think so. Can you shoot there? Uh, yeah, I can now. Yep. Shooting there. Yep. Hitting on sixes because you're in cover. Fully in cover. Okay, you, because you I don't have ignores concealed. Right. Yes. Nothing. Nothing. Okay. All right, so hand-to-hand -hand combat time. Uh, any nerve checks? No nerve checks. No so nerve checks. So they're no longer wavered. No longer wavered. And okay. he's no longer wavered. Nope. All right, so hand-to-hand -hand combat. Okay, so let's go. Let's go crimson. Okay. Whoa. Four hits. Four hits. Defense four, so... Two. Because of crushing two. Oh, she has crushed two. Yep. So three. Three wounds. Three wounds, okay. Okay. Then 36 attacks in the rear from the Ogre Palace Guard. So okay, so this is one of these situations. 36 attacks. Uh, hitting on fours because they're hindered. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at 18 hits and then wounding... Uh, I would two. just... So here is a case where I would say double one it, because he's going to do more than enough to basically only need double one. Double one, so... And, and there's no inspiring. Double. Okay. So that's where you sort of save yourself time as well, or... or your opponent. Your opponent time. Re reforming all the way to there. Now, in tournaments, you may make the guy roll it just because it is a time game, but I even still give it to people. If and it's that obvious, I give it to them. Yeah, yeah. There's, like... Sometimes I just roll so bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so okay, Even if you one. rolled bad there, you're still in so good, like the shape that you Okay, need. so High Chaplain Augustus has four attacks. Okay. 
He has crushing strength one, elite melee. Okay, so, however, hang on. Mm -hmm. She has ensnare. Oh, so hitting on fours. Fours. Uh, that was huge. And the elite. Okay. One uh, hit. And, and crushing one. So uh, defense four. So you need, you got a wound. Got a wound. Woo. That so she can't cast. Just put a disorder on her so she can't cast, which yeah. is what I wanted. Okay, uh, morale check. She is 10 12. So you need 11. 10 That'll 11. be enough to waver her. And waver. Ah. Okay. All right, work my way along. Across the street. All right, let's go to the dragon. Okay. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Ten. Okay, you don't have phalanx, though. I, I have ensnare. Only ensnare. Yeah. It's a pity you don't have phalanx. That would be because okay. they do double. So minus one to hit. So I'm hitting on four. Three. Uh, that's three, not bad. He still only missed three yeah. because of that. I'm oh, winning on twos. Three. I'm winning on twos. Yeah. Not so bad. Two, four, six wounds. Six wounds. Got him up to eight, so you need a double six. Yeah, it's, it's very difficult to take out that unit. That naiads. Okay. All right. Uh, over here against Rim. Yep. Okay. Um, that was 12 attacks. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve attacks. Hitting on threes. Yep. Rerolling ones. Oh, nice. Oh, few, quite a few ones in there. Two's gone, but other than that, that's pretty good. Wow. Yeah, okay. 11 hits. Okay, crushing one. So you need force. So okay. five wounds. Five wounds, got him up to 16. You need a four twice. Where your rolls have been today, that should not be a problem. Well, 10. Okay. Oh, oh, he's fine. He's fine. <laughs> okay, out. Woo! Well, that's... Woo! <laughs> Woo! Woo! I needed that. I needed that. Uh, yep. Damn it. Okay. All right. Thanks, Phil. You take care, buddy. Okay. Um, We're right, going so for it, Phil. Done. We're going for it. Okay, over here. Okay. 16 attacks, I think, from my yep. official hunt. Two, four, uh, you do get Slayer, D3 six, Slayer, so might as well roll that first 10, to see what you get. 12, 14, 16, and D3 Slayer, which is... The leaner. Nope, two, two more. more. Okay. Uh, hitting, hitting, hitting on fours two. and wounding on fours. Okay, that's okay. You just needed average. You don't need much here. Yeah. And then fours again. Okay, all right, so we got six. six. So we got him up to 14, he is 15, 17. Reroll it, and you uh, got him, uh, got him. Oh, uh, seeing that one. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, I am turning this way. Yep. Okay, <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, that is my turn. That is your turn, sir. My turn five. All right, wow. not that we matter with clock anymore. Yeah. Five. So I have a decision to make here. These guys have seven wounds on them, and I believe. Okay. I can still see you, so I could just fire everything at this and try to get rid of this unit. Yeah, good. Do you have any direct? No. Uh, nope. Nope. Okay. Yeah. Nope. So can see them. Mm -hmm. Those guys would need to reform, mm -hmm. which I th think, because I can reform anyway. Yep. Uh, these guys are not wavered. Nope, they're not. So you're just reforming? Just reforming so then I can then add, shoot add at them. Shots. Yeah, may as well. Shoot. All add shoot. Up. Yep. Because it's my turn five, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's that's my, my hope and my chance there. Uh, she's wavered. <clears throat> yep. So we're just going to... Mm -hmm. Stay there. Uh, ha -ha. Okay, we'll come back to them. <clears throat> so, as long as I have a movement of five, so pivot. I have to pivot all the way that way and You're go that way. Clear an inch. So, 
And basically, I have to go within an inch. That's all I can um, do. So I which can't. way were you, were you facing? Okay, so yeah, it was like 90 degrees that way. Okay, cool. Does that look right? Yeah. I'm, I mean, I can end up just doing that. I, all yeah. I have to do is clear my own unit. Yep, yep. There. Mm -hmm. I can't surge though, so the only thing, only option there will be to shoot him. Yeah, and you know what? It's just not going to take much. Not going to take much. <clears throat> Counter, so mm -hmm. eight regen. Mm -hmm. So God damn you, regen. Or you love the regen. I hate the regen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got one, only one back there. So you're fine. And that was a counter, by the way. Perim's countering. Of course he's countering. She can't do squat. Shoot, shoot. Well, let's do it. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Um, mm hmm. Who do we want to start with? Uh, shooting. So two shots on them. Okay. Hitting on fours. Yep. Rerolling once. There's one hit mm -hmm. and one reroll. Oh. Mm -hmm. D3. One. Uh, oh, it didn't wound you. It didn't wound. Jeez. Okay. Okay. 12 attacks with the, the no, 10 attacks with those boys. Yep. Cover. Four. And oh, what's your height? Uh, height two. They're only height two, that they're calf? On, they're on a calf. Oh, okay. Regular eight, calf. Eight, ten. So, fives re-rolling ones. So, we got three hits, four, four hits, five and hits. two re-rolls. Yep. Five hits, wow. Not bad. Uh, okay, but those missed, and then... Defense five. I need fives. One wound. One wound, no piercing on those? No uh, piercing. Okay. Uh, but they are, they do have a frozen token on them. Eight. Okay. Um, I forgot the iron roll. Okay. <clears throat> roll nerve. Uh, yeah, that's it. Shooting, yep. Six and eight. eight is Fourteen. Fourteen. Um, they are uh, 15, 17. I needed one more. Okay, so they're fine. <laughs> that's been. Okay, and I get back one from iron. You get so one, I'm... yep. Uh, Harim. Oh, now we're into combat, so we're going to do D6 with Harim. Yep. And he's going to get three, so he'll get 13. Yeah, his unit should be smashed this turn. Okay. Mm. Alrighty. Hitting on fours. Okay. And yep. then wounding on twos. Yeah. So six. six more. Takes them to 13. Okay. They're dash 17. And re-roll. They inspire themselves, right? Yes. Yeah. So that takes them out. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we will do that because we're not worried about Phoenix Lady. Mm -hmm. But we are worried about... Okay, Anything so. else? All right, so now yeah, it's 25. So we're going to take out 25. I have 32 dice total, so I will take out seven dice and then roll the rest. Okay, fours and fours. Okay. Ones, twos, and threes. Yeah, looks like a lot of them. Oh, a lot. Your favorite ca uh, Canadian tire dice. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna gift you them for. <laughs> you know what? They'll probably roll better than my dice. Yeah. There's one more three in there. Is was there? Yeah, yeah, that one. Right there, there it is. Yep. Okay. Oh, that's terrible roll. Needing that's fours. Well, they made up for it there. Okay. So two, four, six, eight, nine. nine. Okay. Okay. You're gonna need a higher number. Well, how many wounds did he have on him? Uh, none. Because oh, because uh, you healed him back. Yep. How about... 19. 19. Uh, that's going to be a reroll. Nah. Not, not enough now. I'm uh, fine. Does he have iron resolve? He does. So you get one back. So it goes okay. down. Okay. Okay. That was my turn five. Your turn uh, five. Sorry, you had the shooting here on him. Oh, yeah. 18 attacks there. We definitely want to do that because yep. he's he's given... He's, yeah. he's a pain in... The Earth Healer. Yep. 
Okay, three, six, okay. Mm -hmm. So hitting you on fours. Yep, you did say you intended to shoot that guy, so I did. I'm good with that. Thank you, sir. Fours. You're a good man, sir. Okay. Ah, actually it's fives. Let's be real here, because you're an individual. Yes. Not bad. Okay, what's his defense? I think his defense is four. Defense of four. So threes. So, so three. three takes up to 12. Okay. So yeah. This is where Todd, so Todd, you were saying, I just have to breathe on a little bit. And again. And yes. There you go. All right. That's done, that's done, that's done. And over to you, sir, your turn. My turn. Five. Five only, okay. But if you take an assessment and accounting of the situation, Bard is currently holding one, two, three and in sp in a spot to hold four yeah so i'm really fighting just to just to again bring this down to a charge in these fuckers. charge charge them so i'm in the side so triple you're getting triple anyways right war machine yeah triple attacks always against a war machine basically um he will be hindered, so that's the only reason why I would make him probably roll it yeah, there. So, so that... although it's 16 and 16 is 32, with okay. 48 dice hitting on fours. Okay, so my choice is here. Okay, so I've got one objective, two objectives, three objectives, four objectives. Mm-hmm. Because uh, I still have the middle one. Uh, my problem here is that he's taken wounds. So um, I need him to survive. To hold that. Yeah. So he is basically he's in range. I'm just gonna pull back. Mm-hmm. And individual can always turn. Yeah. And turn to face and all that sort of stuff. She is she will be in 20. She sure is. Punchy punchy. Punchy punchy. Punchy punchy. Ah, this is this is great. This how it helps bring up a rule. So duelist. Yes. Uh duelist for you, mm -hmm. but because my Ice Queen was facing this direction, mm -hmm. right? Not this direction. Yep. I don't get her in snare rule when she turns to face yep. and when we fight. Yep. So that's an well, important. You, you Individual actually, facing you, you does matter. You don't actually turn to face. You, you end up, you do, but I don't get any special. Like if she had failing. Oh, okay. I only know this because uh, Luke, he has that individual character mm -hmm. that has failings. Mm -hmm. Uh, and if you charge him in a in a other facing, yeah, he still turns to face, but he doesn't get that phalanx rule. I know you align to the target. Yeah, um, what's being charged, but I'm not sure whether it's your front facing aligns. But something we'll check out later. Yeah, yeah, that, that that's no, small, right? Has no impact on this. One. No. Okay. Um, basically, just going to turn in, whoop, turn in space and just someone fell over. Okay. Okay. Um, Okay, so my real choice here is, what am I going to do about these ones? I can shoot them, Yep. Um, which is probably going to be my better idea. So... I would think. Just going to... Just going to move... What's Grim's unit strength? One. And then, you know what, I, I could also use that as a extra uh thing so out of charge rant arc out of range but she can shoot that's the problem okay all right so going to turn around oops and regen four wounds four wounds one two three four regen four up uh, oh nice three three back. back okay zero so she's on one wound okay um staying where they are uh, do, 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 and that is it for all my movement. Yeah. All right, so shooting time. Uh, two shots at, if anything, if anything, should have moved this over here. But I was going to say, who you want to shoot at? I think you might have yeah, blocked yourself. Sure. <laughs> What's Rim's height? Six. Uh, my Phoenix height is six. Yeah. So blocked. All right. Um, okay, so that's that. Uh, other shooting, she's in combat. This unit here. Yep. Uh, what can I shoot at? Can't shoot at him. Can shoot at those guys. Hitting on sixes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hitting on sixes. Would it be sevens? No. Uh, actually, because yep. I, I yes, you moved. So half on sixes. Yep. 
and cover. So you should only roll half those dice, yeah. right? Yep. So six dice or or five dice, sorry. Uh, nothing. Nothing. Not a, not a sausage. Okay. Uh, all right, hand-to-hand -hand combat. Let's go with Crimson. Hitting on threes, re-rolling ones. Uh, sorry, and I'll have to double the dice because okay. another five attacks from... Right, because she has... Uh, Duelist. Duelist. Sweet. So I get that one. Okay. okay. Many. Seven hits. Crush two? Crush two. Twos. It's that big hammer she's got. So six. We've got him yep. up to seven. Ten, twelve. 10, 12. Don't need much. Uh, Reroll. And what's that? Six, Six and four. seven is 13. That's all you needed. She is okay. gone, the lady. She's got a turn. Okay. Um, um, oh, I forgot my casting for here. Oh, go ahead. Okay, uh, heal five. Heal five. Dragon. And I get one, two, three back. Three back. Which That's nice. Puts it on to five. Yeah, you could be fine. Yeah. Yeah, see how you roll. Um, okay. Uh, more combat. And attacks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten attacks. Hitting on threes. Fours. Should have been snare. Snare. Oh. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Two oh. hits. Oh. <laughs> oh. And yeah, wounding on twos. Two wounds. Two wounds. Okay, we're up to nine, so you're still, we're still, now yeah, we're good. Okay. Um, Here. Over there. For the, oh, and I have mother shooting over there. With oh, that which one? That Where was yeah, he yeah. shooting? The, uh, oh, go ahead, do that, do two, that. Four, yeah, yeah. six, eight, ten attacks. Hitting on fours. So, no, no piercing. No piercing, so threes. Threes, yeah. Oh, well, that's, five, that's pretty five good. Wounds. Five. He has how many shooting attacks? Ten? Ten. Yep. Woo. So seven. Got him up to seven. Plus six, 13. Uh, that would be a break. And they're gone. They're 10, 12. Okay. Oh, it's 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 falling now, apart. Now the combat. Now the combat over there. So triple attacks. You want so me to roll them? I, I think with this one, it's a double one just because 10, 12 and boom. Okay. And I will sidestep to the right D3. One inch. One inch. So just, I'm in in case. Okay. Is there any question? Boom. There. So now you're definitely in. Okay. So done, done. Um, okay. And uh, was that it? That's it. That's it. All right. Your turn six. My turn six. So this is where I try to pull back as much as I can or... or, or... So Prim is absolutely going to uh, run 14 here. Yep. Okay. Because he's got to claim that one, and yep. hopefully yep. now they are eighteen eight away, eight. seventeen and a half. Seventeen away, which means I'm not in range to shoot this turn, but we could hope you get one more turn. Yeah, or they don't have any wounds. Okay. Hmm. No, that that is that's by play basically. Yeah, I think so. Okay, five. Because nobody else is going to attack them. Okay, and we're going to counter here, so we'll get nine regen. Three, six, nine. So fives. Hmm. What do we get back? Three, three there. Yep. On to the four. Four. Yep. Nice. Okay. Yep. Um, that's, I think that's it. That's it for me. So, and that's a, that's a counter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can't surge, can't do anything there. Harim can't do anything over there. So this is it, 25 attacks. So we're gonna take out five, <clears throat> six, seven. The rest, fours and fours. Okay. Here we go. Oh, looks okay. If I spike here, that would be really handy. That's a spike. Fours followed by fours. Yeah, let, let's have the opposite of a spike this time. No, 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 no. We're, we're liking the direction this is going. Well, that's a leaner. OK. 
Okay. All right. It's still so, good. So, so what's that? Four, eight. Eight. Takes him up to 13. Okay. 13. I think we don't need that high right now. 13, 21. 21. Roll again. Yes. Got it. Dragon is gone. All right. So that gives us a bit of choice because we can pivot on the center mm -hmm. and obviously claim that. Nobody else can do really. He's facing that way. Yeah. Okay. Your turn six, sir. My turn six. All right. My turn six. All right. What I am obviously take? hoping for a turn seven. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to matter for you, right? If I can chase one of your things off, okay. maybe, maybe. Um. <laughs> okay. Well, I've got that. You're not going to. You're not going to be able to do much about that. No. Um. Okay. Let me see. Well, I've got that. I've got that. I might as well stay there. Uh, what I need to do is basically block some. All right, so what's your range of your attack? 12? 10. Uh, 10, 10 with the, let me double check that. Large elemental ice shards. It's only a 10 inch range. Okay. So uh, 17 is their threat. Okay, so going back two and a half. And that puts it out? Uh, I don't I don't think so. They're 14 and a bit. So not really, but it gets you out of charge range. Yep. Which is more important. He's already taken damage, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I only need to... You just you know need what? to I'm gonna do that. breathe on him. And I'm going to turn once, turn twice. Oh, here's the problem. And go 10. You turn to you up. Do you nimble. land? You can't I, land I, in the terrain. I'm though. nimble. I'm not at the double. I'm just nibbling. Yes, but you lose a turn if you land if you land in terrain, no. right? Don't you? No, no, it's just at the double. Okay, okay. And can't you can't at the double when you're in correct. terrain? That's right. Oh, oh I I'm see. Not. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. Not doubling, so you don't even need it because nope. your your range is 18. Yep, but I wanted to get nice and close. Oh, okay. So just <laughs> that helps. <laughs> yeah, because if I don't kill you, I can come back and I can. If, yeah, yeah. If we go to seven, that's true. That's those true. guys can stay where they They're are. Staying there. Okay. They're staying there. They're staying there. And uh, who do I have to kill? And you know what? She's going to come up here. Uh, her tent. Right, right, right. I see what you're saying. Thinking about it now. Eighteen in range. Everybody's taking shots. Taking shots at the ah, rim. The okay. It's going to fall. Okay, and. Uh, <laughs> You know what? Um, hey, this is the longest he's lived, though. Gonna, gonna charge this unit here. Boom. In the back, okay. In the back, not that it matters, because individuals do not get bonuses from flanks no. or sides. That's right. Okay, um, all right, so moved, 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 moved. Staying where they are, staying where he's blocked, blocked himself in again. God damn it, I should have moved over to there. <laughs> so, anyway, <laughs> yeah, did it again. All right, okay, so uh, now it is uh, shooting time, I guess. So yep. she has Slayer so, D3 ranged. D3, okay. So an extra three extra shots. Extra three shots. So one, two, three shots, and then she gets her five. Or is it four? Uh, five. One, two, three, four, five. Wow. So hitting on threes. Shooting is threes? Uh, four, sorry. Uh, four, so was, and that was going to be a reroll. And there's one three. One three in there. So Actually, all those, two threes. Two threes, yeah. piercing one. Okay, so fours. Uh, uh, fours. Fours, two wounds. So two wounds. Two wounds from that her. Gets him up to 18. Four, six, eight. Yeah, I'm, I'm starting to get a bit fatigued mentally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, hitting... Now, We're so used to two-hour games, right? Okay, this one is on fours because my lid point is off yes. the terrain. Yep. That's, yeah, that's all you had to do. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. And fives? Fives. One, two, two three, four. four. So he would be devastated because he's at, well, actually, he's at, uh, yes, yes, you did two more. So he's at in, 22. In combat, and that's it for all my shooting. Okay. Oh, they, this unit can shoot at them. At who? Them? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay. 
Two hits. Wow, look at that. You saved it for the end. D3 plus one each. Oh! What the heck? Wow. If this blows this out, that's like, God damn it, why did I take her out? So eight attacks? Needing twos. Twos. Okay. So what do you got there? Six. Eleven. Oh, okay. And I should have shut up with everything else. Okay. Eleven. So okay. they're up to eleven. Yeah. So it's still. So I. St well, you still could do it. I mean, now you're in the, uh, the twenty twenty two. So you need an eleven. Eleven. Eleven to break them. Okay. Yeah. So that's almost. There's no inspiring there though. Okay. Well, let's see. No. <laughs> Double one. That's the opposite. Double one. That's eleven. Eleven. One and one. <laughs> I heard it. Okay. Uh, I need you to do that again for Harim though. Harim. Okay. Reroll it. No, he's gone. Harim's gone. Oh boy, Harim. The, he, that's the, you know what? That's the longest he's ever lived. Yep. Okay. Um, and I've got my combat here. Yep. With high, um, high chapel and Augustus. Uh, threes, rerolling ones, because he has elite. Uh, he has crushing strength one, so fours. Fours. Throw. Three, Three, wounds. Wounds. Three wounds. Three wounds. Okay. Roll check. You're six. No, because you put him up to 10. So 16. 16, and they are dash 17. And that's the end of my turn. All right, is there a turn seven? There is. There is. <laughs> I'm like, no, please, you. please. Uh, okay, so we are going to go five. Okay. All right. Okay. Oh, was that a notification? And that's it. So we're going to do shooting. 18 shots. 18 shots. Hitting on fives because I will be... Hindered there. Okay. Three. 18 shots hitting on fives on your. Yep. One, two, three. I needed way Sorry, more than that. Sorry, you, you moved? You used steady aim, right? Steady aim. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but I touched the terrain, so now we need. Uh, what's the. Uh, twos. Three wounds. Three wounds, okay. And nerf check. Double six. No, they're good. And these boys just oh, stay there. Oh, those guys took damage in hand-to-hand -hand combat. They can't shoot. Yeah, no. Because they, uh, they're disordered. Oh, yeah. So it wouldn't. Yeah, wouldn't. yeah, because yeah, it used to be a spell. Yep. Now it's a shooting attack. Yep. Yeah, that's right. That's yep. right. Uh, these guys would have regened. Yeah. So we'll just do yeah, that. Yeah, do your regen. Because you might shoot them again. Three, six, yeah. nine, uh, three, six, eight. Okay, that's one of those. Okay, one, two, three. One, two, three. Right. Got them down to eight. All right. Your turn seven, sir. Okay. My turn seven. All right, so it is time to shoot the hell out of some stuff, right? Okay, um, staying where they are. Yeah. Um, Okay, so that's within 18. Sure is. So I'm going to pivot. Because I'm nimble. I have to 10 and pivot again. She's going to face that way. Those guys can see. Stay where they are, stay where they are, stay where they are. Get it over quick. All right, uh, shooting. Uh, five shots. One, two, three, four, five. Get those cursed dice out of that tray. Five shots on the, the ladies. Get them out of way. Oh, come on there. You're, you know, they're, they're your favorite dice bar. Well, maybe I should roll them, huh? Yeah. Five, hitting on fours. Uh, three. Okay. Piercing one. Uh, so threes. <sighs> nothing. Okay, my two shots from my baluster thing. Nothing. Nothing. Uh, my ten shots from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten from the Phoenix. So fours. Fours followed by fours. <laughs> well, yeah, it, it, uh, it's the game is literally telling you none of this matters. Yeah. And you two got two wounds, wounds though. Yeah. Um, so you need a 12 to you. You still you have a chance. Yeah. A double six. Oh, no, you did it. roll that twice in and a row. And that's it for the game. Fist bump, sir. That was a Thanks. good I could have charged intro. Him in, extra uh, in, but whatever. Um, all right. Perfect. Okay, so we'll just put up the music temporarily. We're turned up to seven turns. So it's six turns and then you roll the dice on a four up you have one more turn that's right all right so let's put the music on and we'll be right back
Okay, everybody, uh, if you're still here, um, hopefully you played it at like one and a half speed. Yeah. Or like that. Uh, it that definitely was a, was a demo game. Oh, I'm flagging now. Um, so actually, I actually feel like I've been in a three day tournament. <laughs> uh, sorry, a three game tournament. <laughs> Um, so uh, hopefully that gave uh, enough insight in, as to uh, how the game plays um, and why we like it so much. Oh yeah, like yeah. Um, as uh, this army, my toolkit army, I like that I have two flyers that can go ten. Yep. Um, plus crimson, of course, always does work. My cavalry units allows me to project. Yeah, your otherwise... your your list is definitely more close oh, well. closer of a, a better utility tournament type list uh, than mine was certainly. Yeah, ha having some flies really helps out. It really helps. But yeah. Um, all right, so um, please share the, uh, links to this video. Um, hopefully uh, you'll get your friends that are sitting on the uh, on the fence about yeah. getting into King's War to come in and, and try it. Um, there's plenty of content for them to check out and we've gone through all the all the benefits in ad nauseum at the beginning. Well, in reality, you could watch the first two turns of this game to get a sense and feel of how yeah. the game works. Yeah, not really uh, need to play after that. Uh, yeah, other than some rule specifics as we go along. Yeah, it's just a, it's a, it was a good feel demo game. Mm -hmm. uh, normally our games are way faster than this. We probably could have played two games in the time span oh, we played the one. Yeah, yeah. Um, thanks for all the questions, uh, Todd and, and uh, uh, Phil and everybody. Uh, thanks very much for coming out. And if you have, and, and Kim, and if you have any other questions, please feel free to fire them off to us. You can put them on here mm -hmm. uh, in the dialogue after the chat or just, uh, you know, on our Facebook uh, page. Yep, yep. There's a uh, there's a Victoria Wargaming YouTube channel uh, one for just the YouTube channel. There's also um, Victoria Wargaming if you happen to be in like a local area uh, that you can play uh, here for that. Yeah, let us know. Yep. Okay, so um, we've had enough for one day. Yes. So <laughs> we're going to head off. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.